F L O A. Can y'all hear me? Let me make sure I ain't got y'all muted. All right, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear y'all. Can y'all hear me fine? All right, we got yep. you now. Yeah. All right, we cooking with gas. A little bit. Turn it down just a tad. All right, there we go. All right, how y'all doing? Right, good. good. How, how are you? you? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for coming on. Um, happy Mother's Day, Kim. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there who are watching this show. We appreciate it. Uh, how you guys doing? Good great. How are Saturday. You? Yeah. Um, the, I'm I'm looking in the back to see if y'all got bags packed to head back to Dubai. I'm, I'm wondering if y'all actually moving over there. <laughs> y'all was going a long time. I was like, are they coming yeah. back? <laughs> you know, it, it seemed like a long time, but I think what it was only eight days. Yeah. It was it was eight days, but we had some some travel to the DC. We stayed okay. in DC for a day. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It looks but, like but had it a was. Uh, it was a it was a beautiful trip. It I would recommend. It looked it like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the pictures y'all posted were absolutely beautiful. Like me and my wife are already planning uh, as well. Her friend had been over there a few times, so she's putting together something as well. If that don't work out, Kim, I'm definitely headed your way to the information that you sent me. Yep, that and I yeah, sent. We, yeah, yeah. It looked like y'all had a fabulous time, and that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you said y'all were going for like eight days. Yep. Total. Yeah. Okay. And now, so how long is the flight? Well, we drove over to DC, right? So it was 13 hours nonstop out of DC. Okay, okay. So Woo. I think it would have been longer out of Raleigh, but we didn't have any nonstops out of Raleigh. So that's okay. why we drove over to DC. And DC is like four hours away from us. Okay, okay. Oh, it, it was about about 14 hours coming back because you were you were fighting the the current, the wind coming back. So okay. It was a little longer. Yeah. Okay. And, and we took a different route. We okay. kind of went north, kind of went north towards the North Pole and then came back down. Got you. Okay. Okay. All right. I see y'all got y'all king. Y'all came to represent. That's what I'm talking about. I got y'all king and queen t-shirts on. What's up? I love it. I love it. Yes. Y'all, y'all just do not know how many people, uh, cause I've heard, I mean, I see the post that comes when Kim posts stuff about you and your, uh, the two, two of you. Y'all don't know how many people y'all are influencing, like really relationship wise. Cause even my sister follows y'all. Well, you know, my sister, Twani. Yeah. And she yeah. follows y'all and sees what you guys are doing. And of course, inspiring to have that in our own relationship. So, you, you know, um, it's a huge thing, you know what I'm saying? Definitely promoting that black love. I love to see that. Who are you talking about? Twani? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Twani. Yeah. Yep. So she uh, she's always talking about now. Nah, see, I see Kim and her husband posting this, and so she follows y'all heavy for real. So I'm sure That's she's gonna girl. definitely want to see this uh interview once I'm done with everything. She's a sweetie. So yeah. So let me before I get started, um, just a couple things I need to take care of. First, I want to say um I appreciate the fact that you guys were willing to come on here. Kim, you know, when I first asked her about it, she was like, sure, uh, but let me check with my husband. So uh, Otis, I appreciate you saying, yeah, I do want to ask, what was the, what was it for you that said you you gave me a yes? I mean, what was it for you to say, okay, yeah, I, I, we can do this. For, for me? Yeah. I, I think it's, it's, it's always good to see how other people communicate in relationships okay because that that is the the most important part of a relationship okay because we we're all raised different and we all have our own idiosyncrasies and things that we're accustomed to mm -hmm. and I, I think it's i come from a two-family home a two-parent home okay and it wasn't always uh harmonious it wasn't always the greatest it yeah. wasn't always harmonious right mm -hmm. so you know, I, I had to learn how to communicate with Kim and not go down the road that my parents went down. Yeah. So we, we try to keep an open line of communication and we, we try to make things fun and kind of spontaneous mm -hmm. so we can enjoy each other's company. You know, there are times where we do we are at each other's throats sometimes. <laughs> we, we have those days. But you know, we're we're able to, you know, sit down and, and talk about it. Okay. And 
And when when people say don't go to bed mad, uh, that don't work. Uh, don't listen, they, ain't been, they ain't been married long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't been married long enough. Yeah, they ain't been married long enough. They ain't been married long. Oh, they don't they don't really know what's going on. They, they, I, they I, don't. Hey, uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. So I definitely, because we look like we're going to have some, a really good, healthy conversation here with you two. I told Kim, I'm looking forward to talking to y'all too, because like, I love to see our relationship online. People talk about what <laughs> people talk about what me and my wife have, but hey, I'm looking at y'all like, listen, and y'all been in it a while. Okay, so um, I do sweet. not take- I just want to say that. Y'all sweet, you and your wife. Y'all oh, sweet. thank you. I like, appreciate it. Yeah, I, I like y'all flow. Thank you. Um. We, I do not take the institution of marriage lightly in that I'm saying that it's a sacred institution, meaning that the things that you guys have been through, good, bad, or indifferent, the fact that you are willing to come on and be transparent and come on and show and share some of those experiences and how you managed to get through them is, is not taken lightly by myself and hopefully not my audience. Because the goal is to be able to kind of to what you said, Otis, to be able to see how people communicate in their relationships. And hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully that people who are watching this can say, hey, I'm in that same situation right now. This, again, mm -hmm. this, is, they, this is their tools and how they got out of it. Um, right. I, I normally have therapists on here, um, but unfortunately both of them were indisposed so they won't be able to be on here. And if you guys are okay, we may run over just a little bit. I normally do with people that I know, but if not, we'll definitely try to keep it at an hour uh, so that you guys can get out of here. Um, we may, Like I said, it may be maybe about 15, maybe 20 minutes over, but for the most part, I'll try to keep it at an hour. Um, that's, but interesting like I, that you say you, that's interesting that you say you normally have, you know, you try to have therapists on as well. That's interesting. Um, what made you do that? Well, I have the therapist on because um, they're not here to... Um, provide their service to the couples that are on the show. What they're here to do is when you guys tell your stories, they're here to give context to the audience that are listening to and say, hey, this is what was going on. No way. They're not on here. I'm not on here to ambush you guys at all. I don't know what's going on okay. in your marriage. I'm not here. To, they're not here to psychoanalyze, psychoanalyze or give you uh, marriage advice or anything like that. You guys, um, how, how long you been married? 28 years. 28 in years. July. So no, I don't. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that a 28 year marriage couldn't use some tweaking here and there. Oh, we've had it. We've we've done therapy before. We've done therapy and counseling. Okay, no, and, and and that's good. I want you to be able to speak about that. But but again, to answer your question, the reason the therapists are on here to provide context for the audience. So when things happen, when you tell me about stuff, they can break that down in in a in a clinical sense and also make it personable so the people who are watching this can say okay good now i understand what was going on and that's it that that's purely the reason they're on here okay yeah and i and i and i believe it's a little different than any other uh platform that's out here as well i don't i don't know of any other platform that also have therapists on the show maybe you have therapists doing the show but i don't think we have it in this context so my goal okay. is to save marriages revive them Hopefully for those who are thinking about getting married, giving them something to think about as well, because sometimes we go into it and we don't have our eyes wide open. That's true. Mm -hmm. We don't have our eyes wide open. We thinking about the, the, the bride's thinking about standing up there in her beautiful dress and the husband's thinking the about wedding. At his, yeah, the wedding, the reception and all the fun stuff. But then guess what? After that's all over, life begins to happen. The there real work be begins to happen. Right. So that's right. the reason for the show and the reason for the therapist. So again, okay. as I was saying earlier, we don't take your participation in this at all, I mean, lightly. So we appreciate you coming on. With that, a uh, couple other things I need to take care of. Uh, so we do play a couple of games on here as well. They're all inspired by Black artists. Uh, okay. We just ask that you kind of let us know which game you would want to play. They're designed to kind of break up the monotony because I have questions that I want to ask that are written down, and then some of the game, some of the games that we play also have game uh, questions that may just kind of uh, spark some more ro robust conversation. Okay. All right. So this game here is called Culture Tags. Culture tags. We have that. We have we that. Don't have that. Oh, well, we I don't know if I want y'all playing this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you know about the different categories with culture tags, but yeah. all right. And we have another one that's called uh naughty nice. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is it not showing up? I don't know if my uh what's the name? It's kind of blurry, it's but I see it. Yeah. 
Okay, I don't know. I thought my uh probably bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. Yep, there yeah, you there go. go. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Like so that's a, yeah. naughty nice. And then we have one that's called Let's Talk. Okay. 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 So I just need you guys to decide which game you want to play, mm -hmm. and then we'll go and we'll get into the conversation. Okay. What you want to play? Um it don't matter to me. I, it don't matter. Okay. Well, you guys gotta choose. Naughty, nice. naughty, naughty nice. nice or naughty what was nice. the other one? Uh, let's okay. talk. Not talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's or do naughty. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Okay, let's cool. Let's do let's talk. Let's talk. All that right. one sound like that's going to be deep. Yeah. <laughs> let me take, All right, let me so take a sip on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you sound like you you guys said you've been married 28 years, correct? Yep. 28 All right. years so, yeah. Tell us a little tell us a little bit about your marriage. How long you been married? Kids, how many we have? How did you meet? Let's go into that. Okay. Would, would you like to do the honors or you want me? I'll let you do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, let, okay. I'll let you yeah, go let, into let I'll let you tell the story about how we met. Okay. But we have it'll be 28 years this July that we've actually been married, 30 okay. years together. Um Otis has he had a son before we got married okay um i had a daughter so we had we both had kids before we met okay so my daughter was three his daughter was four, well they was three and four by the time we got married so but anyway i had a daughter he had a son and then um we came together and started okay. dating okay as here, far as yeah how we met here's how it all started <laughs> the summer of 1991 uh oh the summer of 1991 was, I was, uh, and I always I disagree with college. that date, but go ahead. I was still in college. Mm -hmm. um, you were a young and, man. <laughs> I was a young man still in college, and I was starting to try and prepare my life after football. Okay. Oh. So um, I, I went to, I had some friends who were working at a company called PPOM in Southfield, Michigan. So he was working there, former football player as well. We had a couple guys working there. So I, I went there just to kind of take a look at the place and, and look around and see what the work entailed to see if I wanted to do that if I didn't go to the league after I finished that season of 91. Okay. Michigan, University, at of Michigan. University of Michigan. Okay. So um, they're showing me around and uh, uh, they introduced me to this girl named Kim Pitts. <laughs> and... And and I am Jeff Cohen. Jeff Cohen, Jeff Cohen. Uh, showed me showing me around with JJ Grant, and they introduced me to this young lady, Kim Pitts, and I am just I'm blown away at the time, Ooh, but I wee. didn't let them know that. <laughs> I didn't let them know that. So uh, I, I left that visit, and you know went on through my my senior year at school, and then I end up not going to the league, and then I end up taking a job there at PPOM in the summer of 92, so right? That's, 92. that's what I remember. Yeah, 92. So um, I, I'm in a relationship, kind of in and out of a relationship with my, my child's mother mm -hmm. and it, it, things are just not working. And then we, we had a, uh, in the lunchroom every day, we had a lot of conversation about how relationships should be how the things they didn't like and the things they did like. The and two of you? Time, well, it wasn't just us. Oh. It was a group of friends. It was okay. A group of people who worked at the company. Yeah, we used to call that the black lunchroom. Yeah. Okay. Because it was all the black people <laughs> in this lunchroom. <laughs> right. So it was a lot of her girlfriends and a lot of the guys who I had befriended at the company. So we'd, we'd have our little kind of dialogue. And, oh, wow. and I always would sit back and I'd kind of listen to what she was saying because mm -hmm. I knew I liked her. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to see where her head was at. Okay. And before I decided to make my move to make a okay. long story short, I, I, I worked at that company in the office with her for almost a year and we, we got to know each other, but she told me that she don't date guys that she worked with. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you that. You overheard that. Well, I, overheard, I, overheard <laughs> that. I overheard that at the table at, at one of our talks. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll be damned. So, um, you know, I, I kind of heard about a job opening in a different state, in the state of Ohio, but I'm still with the same company. And I said, you know what? Then I could possibly take this job down in Ohio and I can still see this young lady that, that I like. That you plotting and scheming. 
<laughs> yeah, so I, I was working, boy, I was working. So, so I took the job in Ohio and then we started dating. And then from there, I ended up uh, um, being hired at Ford in 1993. Mm-hmm. And then we, we just took off from there. And from there, it's been Kim and Otis from that point on. Unbeknownst to me, however, I, I had no idea he was plotting and planning because <laughs> I just thought he was a cool guy. I didn't uh-huh. give him the time of day. You know what I'm saying? Not like that. Yeah. I just was like, he's somebody I work with. He cool. And But he used to, and just like a lot of the guys at the job, they used to always want to know. We were like the cool girls. So they wanted to always know what y'all getting into this weekend, what y'all yeah. doing, da, 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 where y'all going to be. So right. everybody used to always pull up wherever we was at. Mm-hmm. And he became a part of that crew. So okay. he was always trying to hang out with me and my girls where we going to be at or pull up to whatever club we was at, right. all that kind of stuff. So, and again, all that time, I didn't know. And it was, I remember it was a, it was one girl in particular at the job. She was like, girl, if you don't know that boy like you, you is blind. What is wrong with you? She was <laughs> like, he like you. And I was like, oh, that's like, no. Nah. Yeah, she thought I was funny looking. Yeah, I used to say that. I was like, funny looking. <laughs> no I was like, way. White socks and black shoes. He <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, hey, let me ask you something. I know Kim's from Detroit. Were you from Were you from Detroit? Are you from Detroit as well, Otis? I'm from Canton, Ohio. Oh, that explains the black socks and the white shoes. Okay, that's what yeah, I was trying to get you. White shoes. <laughs> I mean, the white socks and the black shoes. White socks and the black. That explains it. Okay. All right. <laughs> that, that was my That was my Michael Jordan era. Era. Where Michael Jordan. The black shoes. Michael Michael Jordan wore the black shoes and the white. You mean socks. Michael Jackson? Oh no, he's Mike, talking about Michael, Michael Jordan because he's hung out with him Michael quite a few Jordan times in the nineties. Oh, Jordan used to wear when he wore a white dress shirt, he wore white socks. Where he wore a cream dress shirt, he wore cream socks. Oh, to accent his shoe. Oh, okay. So that's where I picked that from. But he won Michael Jordan. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, how many kids do we have? Uh, three total. Three total. Three total. We did, okay. you know, you know, his son, my daughter, and then we had a son together. Two boys and so, yeah. Uh, when you two met, how old were the children? When we started dating, yeah, they were uh, three and four. Three and four. Okay. Yes, yeah, they were three and four because we started dating the summer of '93. Okay. Okay. All so right. yeah, his son was four. My daughter was three. All right. Um. So when you guys got together, the kids were fairly young. What the the biological parents like? What is the what was at the time? What was the relationship with the biological parents at that time when you guys started dating? <laughs> Woo boy! You can put your head down on that. Uh, you go ahead first. Mine is mine was mine was okay. Mm-hmm. He was he was chill, you know, because we weren't together obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was chill. He met Otis. They you know hit it off. They was cool. Um, however, I will say that before he knew that when he realized that the relationship was getting serious, that's when he started kind of, he, I ain't gonna say necessarily trip, but he started kind of falling back a little bit. On his responsibilities to your son? To my daughter. To your daughter. I'm sorry. Right. Um, to our daughter. He started falling back a little bit. Like, you know, not being visible, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, He would go into like these little hibernation periods. Uh, But his family absolutely loved Otis Mm -hmm. and welcomed him with open arms. And I mean, they were at our wedding. All his family was at my wedding except for him. He didn't come. Okay. But, you know, and, and even his dad was like me not being with him was probably the best thing for his for that for that okay. situation he was like he wasn't ready for you okay he wasn't ready for you and he's he, he's proven that so mm-hmm. but we love you we love Daisha, and you know that's that okay uh, but he never caused any problems or anything like that okay. um and then eventually you know he got back on board but in order to get back on board it took otis to mm-hmm. actually go to him and have a conversation with him and say look you are affecting how your daughter is reacting to a lot of different things. She's not understanding why when you say you're going to come, you're not coming. Uh, You know, just little things. And it was like, after that conversation, things changed totally. And 
he was back on board. Everything was all cool again. You know what I'm saying? Everything. So I thank him for doing that. But on the flip side, his situation with his son's mother was totally different, still different to this very day. Like, and, and, and our kids is grown. They 34 and 33 years old. And she, he, he went through more, he went through hell. I didn't, I always tried to work with my, son, my, my child's father. We, I never bashed him or anything like that. I just let him work through his situation himself, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and then he reeled himself on back in. He was good. We good to go. And we still cool to this day. Okay. So, you know, he oh. always did what he was supposed to, he always did what he was supposed to do for his daughter. He just wasn't, he wasn't visible. visible. He wasn't visible. He wasn't visible. Yeah. So, okay. um, so that, that, you know, he went through that little phase for a moment, <laughs> but then he, you know, got back on, on track and we were back good again. You know, he was back good again. And, you know, yeah. that's how that, but yeah. his story my, is a little my, bit different. My situation is totally the opposite. It's like the, the woman scorned type of thing mm-hmm. where, you know, I went through, friend of the court. I went through not being able to pick my child up when I was supposed to. I I went through all of those games because she was not happy because I was not with her. She wasn't over the relationship. Yeah, she wasn't over. She wasn't over it. And, you know, it, unfortunately, it's still a lot of bad blood between us now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my, my son is 34. So, I really don't have to deal with her anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know, it, it was tough. It, it put a lot of stress on our relationship. And how so? You know, we. Um, oh, I was ready to break up with yeah, him. Yeah, she, she, she. Was I was like, we don't leave. need to be together because I said I don't need this kind of drama in my life. Yeah, I she, really don't. She was ready to leave, and I wouldn't yeah. let her. I wouldn't let her out. And. She she was like, so you go keep me here and hold me hostage. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he had the physical because restraints on you, Kim. <laughs> he tried. The emotional he restraints. Tried. He tried. I was like, just let me go. Just leave me alone. I said, I do not need this kind of stress in my life. Where were you? Where were y'all living at when this happened? Were Actually, y'all... we were in Detroit, living on Hubble, right? You know, Hubble and Seven Mile. Okay. Yeah, okay. at the time. So. And I, I wouldn't let her go because I knew she was the best fit for me. Okay. So, so I knew that I, you know what, you better keep this woman. I I don't care what you have to do. Uh, I just need to keep this woman. We'll, we'll weather this other storm and we'll get past it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough, but we'll Mm -hmm. get through it. It was tough um, because it's not, it was not just the baby mama drama, but it was also sister drama. His sister, she didn't like me because she had the relationship with his son's mother. Mother. Okay. that, that she was rooting that. for the she was rooting for baby mama. Oh, for she sure. was rooting for baby oh, mama. For sure. Yeah. yeah, she for was sure. rooting for baby mama. So we we had a strained relationship all these years. We really just really started getting along probably about five, six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Really? And y'all been it, married 28 years? You hear what I said? It, it, Did you hear it, what I said? I, 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 yeah. We've been cordial all these years. Okay. But we've been getting along about yeah. the past yeah. since I would say about 2017. So it's about six years now. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, it's 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 been it's been very stressful mm. for for a for a guy to be in a relationship where his his big sister and his wife are not really you know yeah. seeing things like that. Were, did your did your sister come to your wedding? She did reluctantly. She did. She did. <laughs> she, she she came to the wedding and. Um, Reluctantly, she, she was not in the wedding, mm-hmm. and she had a problem with that, and, and that caused another problem. Oh, wow! Because you know, um, she she figured as though being my sister, she would be in the wedding, and this is my wife's opportunity to select select her friends. Right. I cannot select her friends for her. Who's she going to stand friend. up for her? She wasn't my friend. <laughs> so, boy, that 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 goes deep right there. That yeah, 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 yeah. You know that what? She was uh, not my friend, and there you have it. That's right. all I have to say about that. Had she been nice to me during the first two years of us being in a relationship, then maybe I would have considered it. But she was not my friend, and I told him, I said, and his father even like, can you please find a place for your sister in this way <laughs> because she's having a fit. And 
he kept coming to me, baby. And I was like, look, I, I, I'm, a, I'm one of five. I'm the oldest of five girls. I got sisters. I got girlfriends. I got, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, and I ain't trying to have no circus standing up here. Mm-hmm. I, I did not want to go through any of that. So I had two of my sisters. I had three girlfriends and a cousin. And that was that. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's all. I said, if you want your sister in the way, she can stand up on your side. And my two youngest sisters were hostesses. Mm-hmm. Cause they were like 12, 13, 14. Some, they were teenage. They were okay. teens. Um, but yeah, I was like, she can stand up on your side if you wanted to, but she ain't standing on my side cause she don't like me. So right, why would right. I do that? Right. So, I know when we, I know when we got married, my wife wanted people who were there at the wedding, who were rooting for us. That was her main thing. I want people absolutely. there. Like I need right. that absolutely. energy in the room. I need people there rooting for us. Absolutely. What I was going to, what I was gonna say, oh, this I my she's not my blood sister, but I mean we grew up. I mean, she's like a sister, she's just a sister from a, a different mother. Mm-hmm. Um she I, I was in her wedding and she wanted to be in mine, but I was like, my wife had you couldn't make that decision. I, it wasn't my decision to make, but what I didn't know is that you could actually. I could have, I didn't notice at the time, but I could have had her stood up on my side. She would as a kind of like as yeah, a groomsman or a grooms. Right. Woman, but I didn't know that. Cause yeah, and that's I what I told did. him. He could have did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that was even a thing. So I was like, oh, right. I didn't yeah. know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause you know, but anyway, hindsight be what it is. I apologize to her. She was good, but I'm just saying, I didn't know that was a thing that you could do. So, so everybody who watching out here, if you got a female and your wife, ain't cool with her or she got already got her people mm-hmm. picked out she can stand up on your side as a groom's yeah. woman yeah. put on mm-hmm. uh you yeah. know wear the same color as the men but put on her dress and she can stand up on right. your side if you got a tux. female put on a tuxedo maybe yeah there you go yeah. right exactly and yeah. that's what i told exactly. her i was like she can stand up on your side but she's not standing up on my side because she does not like me okay so she's not my friend um, she doesn't so, like me yeah, so we're we're sort of to some degree past that now. You said you in the last five years your relationship yeah, with your sister in law has that. improved. We're we're past it. You know, like I said, for the past since about twenty seventeen to be specific is mm-hmm. actually when we um started getting better. Okay. Getting what better. Was your, what was your what was your indicator? What was what was your indicator that things started getting better? Um, her talking to me more maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it was just always weird going to his mom's house, you know, during the holidays and stuff. And, you know, just lack of, you know, we just didn't talk. She, yeah. you know, never asked me to do anything. She avoided you know. the conversation, avoided the conversation. Yeah. I mean, it was just little stuff that we would say to each other just to kind of keep it simple. I guess the energy was off. Or keep it cordial. Yeah. Keep it the cordial. Energy was off. Um, yeah, the energy was so off. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, from the very beginning with him and his sister, you know, for the first time he brought me home to, his, to meet his family, they had an argument, literally, him and her, about me, about me being there. In front after, of you? I was, it was after midnight. I was asleep in the bedroom and I heard them in the living room arguing. It was during the, it was my first holiday season with him, first Thanksgiving, first Thanksgiving. And I said, I'm never going back to your house again. Never. I was like, I should have kept my black ass at home, me and my daughter. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I should have stayed at home. Oh and my God. And, and Kim, uh, uh, and this is to both of y'all. Home. This is a, um, well, this is an adult show. So please, you don't have to bite your tongue. We keeping it at a buck over here. So, hey, don't worry mm-hmm. about that. Uh, oh. oh and I don't want so when I, I got back home. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, so when I got back home from that, we 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 actually didn't stay the full weekend. I was like, I'm ready to go home, I'm ready to go home now. You mm-hmm. know, he tried to take me out for a day of shopping the next day after Thanksgiving, all that other stuff. And I think we ended up coming home. He brought me home Saturday morning instead. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling my girlfriends about it, and they was like, "See, you shouldn't have went. Told you you shouldn't have went. It was too soon. You shouldn't have went." <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I was like, yeah, this is going to be a hard one. So between his sister and his son's mother, I would, and the son's mother used to always go run into his sister, mm-hmm. crying and everything, trying to get her to talk to him and take her back. And, oh, and I was wow. like, I don't have time for this. I really oh, don't. Wow. So, so, so stress. yeah. So Otis, I could see how stressful it was for your wife. And I imagine it was stressful for you as well. Excuse me. How did you work through that? Oh, boy. Uh. 
Well, it was it was a lot of just trying to reassure Kim that you know my love is for you. I don't have any love for the mother of my child other than she's the mother of my child. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be in a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. My love is for you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. So I, I just had to keep, you know, reassuring her of that and making sure she knew and understood that I was in it with her and mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to, to go back in that direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, um, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time together I, at that point. When I took the job at Ford, I had an apartment in Toledo. Mm -hmm. I had an apartment in Toledo and my father lived in Sandusky. So I would stay with him during the week and then I would go, I would drive back to Detroit every weekend mm -hmm. to spend time with Kim every mm -hmm. weekend. Even when I worked on a Saturday, we worked mm -hmm. every other Saturday, I would leave if we were on second shift, I would leave right after work about 11, 1130. And I'd be at in night, Detroit. I'd the be love, in the love of a black woman, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be in, I'd be in Detroit by two o'clock that Sunday morning. He's like, I'm going to and, get my baby. And then I'd stay, I'd stay that full Sunday. Yeah, and then I'm work. leaving out maybe 2 a.m. that morning to be at my job by 430. Kim, I got a question for you. Did you recognize what he was doing? The, the 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 what he was going through to get you i did i recognized it however you were present I for was, it i mean were you present for it i was present for it okay I, I did see the effort um yes i saw the effort he he was he was relentless um however i would say that it was for for the for the, you know, proving to me that he loves me and all of that, you know, he wants to be with me. That's what I saw. I did see that. However, it was the sister part that I was struggling with because he would never address his sister mm -hmm. and the things that she would do. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got it because that's your big sister, but he never would address her on, you know, just how she, you know, would act. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, that and, and I and I me being, you know, especially after we done got married now and I'm still just trying to be the good little wife and I'm trying to just go with you when you say you're going for different holidays and things like that. I'm going to go. I, I and I, I kind of after after years went on, I kind of fell back from that. I'm like, yeah, that's your thing. You go. I'm chilling. I, I didn't I didn't put in my time. I ain't got to go. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to go. I can stay home and just do what I do. You go spend time with your family. Oh, so, OK. Okay. Wow. I think uh, at, at that time, at that time where, when I had finished playing football at Michigan, I was, I was going through depression and didn't know it hmm. because I, I go from playing football from the age of nine all the way to about 22. Mm -hmm. And then this game that I know and love so much has been taken from me. Mm. And it was a point where I didn't want to see football. I didn't want to talk football. I didn't want to know anything about Michigan football. Oh, wow. And I, I look back on it today and I said, damn, I was going through depression at that time mm -hmm. and didn't even know it because I was trying to purge myself from it. Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing that I had that was constant was her. Mm -hmm. So I dove deeply into her. Mm -hmm. Everything I did was about her. Okay. And that's how I managed to get through it. Okay. All right. Okay. Did you rec did you recognize that he was going through some form of depression at all, Kim? Or, you know, or did there was anything signs or symptoms that you saw? I would say that at that time during that era, I probably would not have said that it was depression. Mm -hmm. I was I remember saying that I knew that he missed it uh because it was no longer his routine when it came that time of year. Mm -hmm. Um and I did recognize that he wouldn't watch the game. Mm. He would, you would go to some games though from time to time, time, to time. but mm. he wouldn't watch it on mm -hmm. TV. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't at that time, you know, how we are so into mental health these days, mm -hmm. if, you know, being mental, you know, mental yeah. health awareness, we weren't talking about it like that yeah. back then. In yeah. The 90s. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's more prevalent these days. So it's like, that's the first thing you kind of hone in on now. Mm-hmm. And then when, you, when we think back to it, it's like, damn, that's really what you were dealing with. And we didn't, we no, didn't know no, it. No, we we'll recognize you know I mean? it, right. Yeah. So, right. Right, right, right. I can understand that. Um, so Otis, tell me about the proposal. When did it happen? How did it happen? Wow. Um, it, it happened. I, I was, I worked a, I was on second shift. So I worked a Friday night mm-hmm. and routine getting off work and bags already packed from Lorraine, Ohio, driving up to Detroit. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I arrived. Oh, well, for, I for, arrived for context, Detroit. I'm sorry, for one minute, I just want to ask this. How long was that drive? Uh, that drive was about two and a half hours. Okay. Okay. About two and a half hours. And uh, we had and a all routine. All you got, the whole two and a half hours, Kim on your mind. Got to get Kim on Kim. my mind. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to Escape and Brian McKnight the whole way. I was about to say Brian McKnight, because that was his name back then. I remember that Brian, vividly. Brian McKnight escaped the whole way. Okay. So the routine was I'd arrive, I'd call her and say, hey, are you hungry? So normally we, I order a, a pizza from Bob's and pick it up. Oh, uh-huh. seven so, miles. Seven. <laughs> so, I, so I grab a pizza from Seven Mile and I go in the house and, you know, I get showered and we, we chop it up for a bit and just kind of lay in the bed and talk and then just kind of fall asleep. But, mm-hmm. but this one night, it, it was no going to sleep. So I, I had purchased the ring probably about a couple of weeks prior. Mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, okay, before you do go into that, how long had y'all been dating prior to the this? About a year and a half. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we hadn't. Even, it was ten months. It hadn't even been a year. It hadn't even been a year. Wow. We okay. started dating in, in June of ninety three. And you proposed to me in April of 94. Otis, you've been married longer than I have, but I would say, and I'm sure you probably know this, don't argue with the woman about the dates, man. It, it, it don't do us no good. Right. It don't do us no good. absolutely right. So, <laughs> it don't do us no good. I mean, good. I remember dates and yeah. things like that. I just didn't, I, I, I don't remember the exact date that he proposed to me in April of 94. I just know it was April of 94. Okay. Yes. So it was, it was less than a year. I, nice. I thought it was more, but okay. Um, so, you know, coming in that night and us chilling, sitting up talking, I just asked her to marry me. It, it wasn't the, the typical get down on one knee type of proposal. It was like, you know, we were just laying there, sitting in the, laying or sitting in the bed. We were propped up in the bed. We were propped up in the bed. And then I reached over the side of the bed and I pulled her out the ring and asked her would she marry me? And she said, yes. Oh, wow. Wow. And then, and then from that that next morning, we went on the uh, the ring tours. I guess <laughs> <laughs> the ring tour. We, we went to all of her girlfriends' house. In my grandparents, all of her my house, parents, her parents house, yes, and, my auntie. Yeah. So Kim, with everything that was going on with the sister and the baby mama, what made you say yes? You know what? That's a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> I probably, because I honestly, because I always say, I never thought I would be married. I always thought it was just going to be me and my daughter rocking it out. That was mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know, probably just from shop, but no, I honestly did love Otis. Mm-hmm. Well, do love Otis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, thinking back at that time, it was like, you know, he was different from any of the guys I had ever dated at the time. Mm -hmm. He always thought about the little things. He didn't depend on me for, to make sure things was done. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was like, I was always that one in the relationship, making sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And he he made, he kind of took some of that burden away. Okay. You know, whenever I had any issues with my family that I had a shoulder to cry on because- Mm -hmm. Again, I am the oldest of five girls in my family. Mm-hmm. And they, it's like I'm that person to kind of come to everybody's rescue. Mm-hmm. As if I'm the oldest will. of five as well. So I, I feel you. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So it, it could, and in, in, in during that, you know, them late 80s, early 90s, it was something dealing, being there for my sister, especially the two right up under me. Cause whenever they called, I went running. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we, from growing up in the hood, yeah. you come ready. You go right. ready for something. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
when he got, when he and I got involved, it was like, I mean, it could be, Al, it could be the middle of the, two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm getting a phone call and I'm jumping up out the bed. But, and he like, hell no, nah. you is not going out this house or <laughs> you ain't going without me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he had my back. Mm-hmm. I'm out here trying to fight guys with my sisters. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? All right. And he's like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. You're not mm. doing that. So okay. it was like, it was that for me. You know mm. what I'm saying? It okay. was like, he really looked out for me and I didn't have that before. Cause he was just, he was just different because yeah. it was like a lot of hood guys, if you will, that I always dealt yeah, with. So if you ready but for I drama- always knew that I would never be with any of them because yeah. they hood. Right. And he was not that. So. Right. And so the guys you were dating that was from the hood, you ready for war, they ready too. They're like, let's go. When are we going? Right. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Basically. I get it. I understand. You always got to have, I think you definitely, it's good to have that balance, that yin and that yang. Like one person right. should be chill, calm, a little more right. level-headed. It sounds like, Kim, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're probably more quick-tempered than your husband is. I, I think I am. Okay. okay. I think I am. I, 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 would, I would go with that. <laughs> that's, that's about right. But but there's a point when I get to a point when I get to that boiling point. It's no stopping. Then you need yeah. another one. Yeah, no, I no and, and you but seem it takes like a the, lot for him to get. It takes a lot for him to get that way. Yeah, With and, me, and Otis, like don't this. get me wrong. Yeah, you seem like the quiet storm. But I'm just saying, just from your knowing your wife, she kind of to some degree because my sister, it don't take much to like that match, and they and they and they yeah. often run it. So and I know the yeah. hood she comes from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know what? While she's taking a break, I need I have a little bit of a sinus infection. So let me grab some tissue and I'll be right back. Okay. Show me that um glass. Show me that You see that shot glass? Can you see what that says? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the shot glass that my girlfriends made for me. That was a quick, that was a quiet you know, storm. Nickname they gave me on a girls' trip. Quiet storm. <laughs> they were like, Yeah, because you are that. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Y'all been married 28 years, so I'm sure there's a lot of it's not so it's not funny now moments y'all had in y'all marriage. Tell me what was the most difficult time or year of your marriage? Like what was the most difficult year of your marriage? Mm. I would probably say moving down here. Yes, moving yeah. down. So 2008. 2008. Okay. Yeah. Why 2008 was it so 2008 to 2009? Okay. Why was that difficult? Moving, we we actually I, I was just uh, I had left Ford, mm -hmm. and uh, after giving them 15 years of my service, I decided to, you know, move south because I was not, you know, receiving that upward mobility that I should have been receiving. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll go south. They got jobs down there, and they want to hire me to do this. Mm -hmm. So we. We, we talked about it. We came, I came down, interviewed, got the job. Kim came down, met all the people who I was going to be working with. And she said, yes. And so we, we, we set the plan in motion to, to come down here and, and, you know, start a new life. Mm -hmm. So we, we come down here and we start looking in the vicinity of the place I was working in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, mm -hmm. which is way out in the country. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing really to do. And the closest big city was Raleigh. And that mm -hmm. was an hour away. Okay. So uh, we came down, looked at some places in Rocky Mountain. She said, you will not be moving me to Rocky Mountain. Said, you're going to have to move me closer to Nightdale. So closer to, closer Raleigh. to Raleigh. So we, we found a little city right next to Raleigh called Nightdale. And uh, we moved into Nightdale and uh, we set up camp there and it, it was difficult because, you know, our, our son was eight years old. Seven. Or seven, going on eight. Yeah. And, you know, he was struggling with leaving North Carolina. Leaving North Michigan. Leaving Michigan, leaving all his family members there, leaving a school that he was accustomed to. And then Kim coming down here and not having all of her girlfriends and family. No job. Yeah. And the support that she can just jump up and take a 35-minute car ride to go see Mm -hmm. whenever she needed to and and it it was it was tough because mm -hmm. it was just us mm -hmm. and you know it was i didn't was, have a job she didn't have a job I, I, you time. know i banked on him like yeah. okay i'm leaving my good paying job yeah. 
up in Michigan to come down here to, right. for nothing. And then every job that I was looking into, the pay scale was horrible down here. Mm. So I'm like, I'm taking a huge pay cut from coming up north to come down here. So I was unemployed for almost a year um, before I decided to agree to take a job and it was like this is this is the best I'm gonna get so I'm gonna have to work my way back up to mm. the kind of money that I'm used to making, making so right. I was kind of discouraged that was discouraging mm. um so I won't I won't call it resentment but there probably was a uh she wasn't happy she mm -hmm. wasn't happy because she had to come down here and take a job for less than what she's worth Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was tough, you know, like I said, dealing with our, our youngest son, Javon, trying to get him acclimated in school. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, a situation where he was being bullied in school and, you know, it, it, it was just rough. It was a rough, the first two years were very rough. Yep. So, so your son was with you? He was here with us. The youngest one. The, youngest. Or the one we have together. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Was, our okay. son. Yeah. Okay, our yeah. okay, gotcha, gotcha. He was gotcha, born gotcha. in 2000. Yes, our son that we have together was born in 2000. Right. How old was your daughter when you guys moved down there? Oh, she, she just graduated high school, so she yeah. was 18. Oh, okay, okay. We, and yeah, your son, just, and your son that you had ten, enough... My kids are 10 years apart. Yeah. My gotcha. daughter was 18, and he was turning eight that year. Okay. So, um, you know... It, she was on her way to college so okay. she you know was like she had right, her own life yeah, this is real yeah she yeah. was like this country down here but okay <laughs> you know but Javon he was um he had just finished second grade up in Michigan getting ready to start third grade down here so okay. um okay. so yeah it took me it, between it Javon and I spent a lot of time together mm -hmm. because it was just the two of us while he's two. gone to work. Right. And we're trying to, I'm trying to learn the city and, you know, understand the schooling system and, you know, be there for him and, mm -hmm. you know, just those types of things. And just being by ourselves, really. Yeah. It was it was an adjustment. It How was did, an adjustment. Yeah. How did you guys like, I mean, that, that sounded like a very, that was a tough ask of, you know, Otis of your wife to say, hey, pack up everything you know and love, your support system which y'all married, so he's now your support system, but like, how how did you guys manage to work through that? Ooh. It took a lot of adjusting. Yeah. I, I think that's probably about the time where we started going to counseling about that time. Yeah. 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 So okay. we, 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 we found we, a church. Yeah, we found a church here, and then we started okay. going to counseling and, you know, just trying to um, get the priorities lined up. Okay. Get the priorities lined up. What what's my priority? What's Kim's priority? What I needed to do to, you know, make her happy and comfortable and comfortable here in North Carolina. Those mm -hmm. were the priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. because we did. We met other couples once we went to church. We met other couple couples, and then there was this elder couple in the in the church, and they just used to do these little marriage therapy couple sessions wow and so we met you know other couples by going to their home mm -hmm. to the elders home and um you know we would just all have these sit down sessions because everybody was struggling with something okay and um we got to you know be open and mm -hmm. and, and work through a lot of things it, it'd be um, sessions somewhat like this yeah oh okay yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing like the power of community though, you know? It okay. Really, yeah. Okay. Nothing like the power of community. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I want I gotta ask this. 28 years of marriage. Um, you you said this 2008 was the most difficult. Was there ever a time in the 28 years where you thought about calling it quits? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I used to say that all the time. Well, I don't you're saying are you saying are you actually admitting it? I'm saying <laughs> Okay, you said it for me. Okay. Cuz I mean, you know, cuz I always say I know you ready. I know you ready. <laughs> and he was like, "No, I ain't never." I'm like, "Listen, I'm getting ready to get these divorce papers." And I'm like, I ain't never signing no divorce papers. Kim, I, Kim, I love you, boy. You are <laughs> I ain't signing nothing. It's telling you stuck with me for life. I ain't signing shit. Like that. <laughs> he was like, you can forget it. I mean, because I used to say, look, I'm going, I'm getting papers, and you go, I'm ready. I'm tired. <laughs> what was what what, I, what I'm done? I'm what, done, what, done. But yeah. What was it, Kim, that had you kind of in that space for a while, bit? Cause he just used to irritate me. He just irritate you. <laughs> 
just irritating. Or I'm just, you know, whatever situation at the time, I can't, you know, or just me probably adjusting to life uh-huh. here. Yeah. It was, that was, that was different. I was like, yeah. And then wh- wh- she didn't have that release. She didn't have I that didn't. release where she can go grab her eight girlfriends and they go out, drink, drink, do whatever, have a good time, go dance. Mm-hmm. She didn't yeah. have that release here. Okay. And I, okay. I was her release. Yeah. And there were times when I was dog tired and I couldn't be that release for her because I'm exhausted. Where, where, well, I, let me ask this. Were you the release or you was the source of the frustration and her girlfriends was the release? That's what yeah, it was. That's, that's, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what okay. it was. He was my punching bag. He was my punching bag. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Basically, he, there was times where it, it was rough. It was yeah. rough. It was, it was how he would lock me out of our bedroom. He would lock me out of the bedroom. <laughs> He would lock me out like you ain't coming up in here. <laughs> you know, it, it would be like I'd be gone maybe from 6 a.m. to about 5, 6 p.m. And, you know, she d- didn't have anyone to kind of adult conversation yeah, to adult conversate with. And, you know, and then I get home and then I'm ready to probably just eat, spend some time with my son and talk to her and then probably go to sleep. Right. But then I'm laying there in the bed and then she want to talk. But see, you know what, too, and I just want to add in there, too, something we skipped over during that first, during the first couple months of us living, when we moved here, Mm -hmm. my mom passed away. Yeah. Oh. When we moved, we moved here in June of 2008, my mom got sick and she passed away August 29th of 2008. Okay. Because when I moved away, my mom called me every single day. Like, Mm. she called me every day until... Mm -hmm she got to the hospital and couldn't call me no more. Okay. And then it was my sisters calling me and saying, okay, here's what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And this is what the doctors are saying. You know, they put, because you know, one of my sisters, she didn't understand nothing. Doctors the medical saying, terminology. So on the phone every yeah. day, you know, that kind of thing. So, so oh, yeah, wow. that, that was another difficult thing. Cause with so that them, added, you know, two and a half months. So that added to your stress. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I was oh, going to wow. say that's, that's, that's something that added to it because, in the midst of, you know, me not even being here 90 days, I'm now planning a funeral up in Michigan for my mom, you know oh, what I'm saying? Wow. Because my sister, they didn't know what to do and they looked to me for everything. everything so yeah. I'm down here doing what needed to be done up there. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and to add to that stress, you have the sisters, you know, fighting, fighting in fighting and she tried, she, Kim trying to be the mediator from 720 miles away. Oh, wow. Mm. Which never worked. Mm. Okay. I need you to go potty, Noah. Oh man. Are you guys grandparents? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. yes. My daughter. Yes. Yes. All right. Can, can we can we see the little tyke before we yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, let's see the here. Bring try. them over here. It's a family show. <laughs> my son just bringing them over. This is my daughter's baby. Okay. Say hi. Hey, how you doing, young man? You all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just right. woke up from my nap. Okay. Give me some sugar. Wow. All well. right. Thank you. Okay. Say nice meeting you. Nice meeting you as well. Say bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Yeah, we. Well, you know what? Listen, this is this is a this is a real. You're surprised. Yeah, this is a real life show. So stuff like that. If y'all have to tend to some, please, you know, do what you need to do. I didn't know y'all were grandparents. We we got it covered because I got my son. My son, I said, listen, when he wake up from his nap, I need you on it. You okay. Know, take, look out for your nephew. Look out for okay. your nephew. All right. How so. do you 28 years of marriage? I I'm uh Kim, do you have uh now that you're kind of then you didn't got accustomed to where you're at? Do you get do you have me time? And how do you communicate that to your husband? Because I'm sure you had it when you were here in Michigan. So how do you communicate that? Listen, I need my me time. And you and you as well, Otis. How do you communicate that I need some me time? 28 years of marriage. You're together all the time. Like, how do you communicate that to one another? And do okay, you think- baby. Um, Actually, that's real easy. It's not a difficult thing for us at all. As much as you see us on Facebook, you mm-hmm. know, Feeling, having date night, having fun, mm. whatever. Um, my me time is just me being here at the house by myself. Okay. I and um, there's times where I will go and 
take, I, I used to go to the spa a lot, but I don't have to do that anymore because my daughter is a massage therapist. Ooh. So she comes here to the house and takes care of me like that. Okay. However, there is this place that I do go to for foot massages. They do strictly foot massages. Mm. So when I just need a little time to just- Send them here. I need you to send oh them Oh my here. God. <laughs> it's like the best thing. Cause I mean, it's the best thing. Like even in the middle of my work day, I will take a lunch break. If it's not a 30 minute session, it's a 60 minute session. But you know, if I, if I can't do the full 60, because I need to come on back and get back in it, mm -hmm. I will take a, I'm like, Oh, they're getting on my nerves. Let me take a little <laughs> break and let me go and do that. You know, that's like a little, a little midday me time. You know, okay. he's at work anyway, because I'm at home by myself during the day anyway, because mm -hmm. I work from home. I work from home before pandemic. Okay. So I've always worked for, I, well, I'm not going to say always, from 2015 until present, I've been working from home. Okay. So um, his me time is golfing. So okay. he'll be like, baby, are we doing anything? What we got planned on this day? That, and I'm like, go ahead and go golf, because it sounds like you already got it. <laughs> so that's what you do. Go ahead and do like tomorrow. He's going golfing. His boy called him and said, hey, you did realize tomorrow is, is Mother's Day, right? And he's like, yeah, we already had that conversation. I got that covered. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. Go do you because I like when he's gone because I don't have to worry about no baby. Can't you baby with this? Baby, 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 baby. <laughs> baby. It's baby something. So, and I'm mean, not just be looking at him like, oh my God, what does he want now? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what he Oh, this in your defense, they have honey do lists for us as well. It's a honey, can oh, you do this? Man. So Woo. listen. Yeah, they do. They, they do. I got a honey do list for us uh out in this freaking backyard because we got to get prepared for Juneteenth. So I got a large honey do list. So I was working on this morning. He, he got up this morning yeah. and was working out in the I yard. I was working on mine this morning too. Because <laughs> I'm like, look, I ain't trying to be the raggedy looking house on the yard. On the, on the <laughs> now finish. Do what you need to do out there now. I'm tired of looking at these weeds. Now, <laughs> like I'm the one who didn't want no yard. I ain't want no house with a yard. He want a yard. I'm like, why you don't like keeping the yard up? Oh yard, my baby. God. Y'all are we hilarious. Know come over. So okay. yeah. All right, so okay. y'all chose. Let's talk. Let's we gonna do a couple questions from this game. Okay. All right, we're gonna do at least three. Y'all have don't been. Worry, don't worry about. Don't worry about time. We ain't got nothing to do. Okay, great, great, awesome. Okay, so fill in the blank. If we stayed together for the remainder of our, of our lives, it would be because of. <laughs> we can't say kids because they grow. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably finances. Finances the, in today's day and age. Okay. Because I mean, it, it's so hard to, well, with with the price of everything now oh nowadays. It takes two probably, incomes. Yeah, it takes two incomes, and yeah. shoot, we probably got to work till we sixty five <laughs> or over or over. Or speaking over. of speaking of which, if you guys don't mind telling this, what do you do? Oh, what's your profession? It's like Otis, what do you do? And Kim, what do you do? Uh, I'm a quality engineer in the automotive uh, sector. Okay. And I've worked, for, oh my God, I've worked for health plans since the year before my daughter was born. So I've been working in the health plan industry for 34 years now. Okay. 34 years working in the health plan industry. I am a, what they call a physician, I'm sorry, a account manager for providers. Okay. So I'm a provider advocate. That's what I am. I, okay. I, I, I help the providers try to make sure they get their money, basically. Okay. So gotcha. I, I, I work for them, but work for the health plan because I'm the punching bag. I'm the front line. They want to make sure they get their money. I need to make sure they got their money. You know what gotcha. I'm saying? So okay. I got to interpret, con interpret contracts, um, set up operational meetings with big wigs of these health systems. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it becomes complicated, but I'm, I'm a provider advocate and I work mainly with health systems, like big hospital systems down here in the Carolinas. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Question number two, can you honestly say that there, uh, that you are giving uh, your all to this relationship? Why or why not? Can I honestly, can we honestly say that we are? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Oh, I would say absolutely. Absolutely, okay. absolutely we are. Yeah, absolutely. Or we wouldn't be together right we now. Sure <laughs> we sure would. We sure yeah, would. We wouldn't be together right now. Yeah. We sure would. Yeah. And this might but be, yeah. yeah, this this is not, um, I know because I've seen y'all, but 
how do you in a relationship, you know, there's ebbs and flows. There's loves that happen in a relationship. You guys have been married 28 years. So there's, there's, there's times when it's down. Um, how do you find, do you recognize when those times when it's down and how do you find a way to renew or respark the relationship? I, I think in my opinion, um, you, you got to keep it spicy or that's a correct word for it. I, I know we, we do a lot of date nights during the pandemic, we did a lot of stuff here in the house where mm -hmm. we would do, um, you know, different things. We'd have a movie night. Mm -hmm. We did like a, what was that? 60s or 70s party theme we did or? Oh, it was like a 20s. Like, like, a, 90s, like a 19s. Yeah. Great Gatsby. Yeah, Gatsby thing. Okay. And, All that know, that was virtual. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, you got to do things to, to, to make things interesting. Yeah. I, I know for me, you know, after working probably uh, 50, 60 hours a week and then coming home on a Friday night, my, my first thought is to get me something to eat, get a shot of the bourbon, smoke a cigar and chill. You you a bourbon That's man too? Thing. You a bourbon man too, yes, Otis? What, yes, what you like? What you like? My my, my favorite, my go-to is Woodford Reserve. Hey. But, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I keep my my second go to is Old Forester because okay. you get so much. Yeah, you get a you get the bag for your buck with Old Forester. Yeah, if you when you and guys daily. if y'all ever come to Detroit, we definitely got to do a date night because my wife loves Wolford as well. We like Wolford. She she actually got me drinking it because that was some. She was a um she used to be a Patron. She used to like Patron, and then she switched from Patron, and then she started drinking Wolford, and she kind of got me. I'm not. I've never been heavy on drinking anyway. But if I drink, that's what we right. drink together. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Nearest is my my other one. Uncle Nearest. Okay, okay. That's, that's we, have you ever had... Huh? That's Black owned, so you know that. Who is that? So look for that, Uncle Nearest. Uncle is Nearest it? is Black. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good he, to know. He's, a, been... he's the guy who taught... Uh, uh, Jack Daniels, how to make yep, this? How to make this? Uncle Nearest taught Jack. Jack Daniels I think my I think my wife might have mentioned that to me. I think she yeah. might already know that. Yeah, we you know we we all about supporting black. So I absolutely. feel that absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so if if my my first thought is to kind of chill and relax, but you know after she's been cooped in the house all week after working all week at home, and I know she wants to get out of the house. So who 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 would I be or how would I say, baby, I ain't taking you nowhere. I'm not going to this or I'm not going to that. I know she wants to get out of the house. She gets all dolled up for me and gets pretty. And and then I, I try to throw some clothes to match what she got on and we go out <laughs> on Friday night. Either Is Friday that, or but sometimes Friday and Saturday. Right. You know? Right. And you know yeah. what? And and that's the thing. Like, um, I think it's so important to be present. You know what I'm saying? In your marriage, like yep. you have to be present and it's, it's a good thing to check in. Like, yeah, do it, do a check. Hey, babe, how you feeling today? What's going on? Yeah. That's key. I agree because I took your question for that. What uh -huh. you just said, when you asked the question, you know, how do we manage when it's, it's dull in the marriage. When goes, yeah. With downtime. Yeah. Yeah. When it's a downtime. And when it's a downtime, I bring that to his attention so that we can sit down and we can talk. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times there was, as, as a matter of fact, during pandemic, one of our date nights was uh, we did a smudging session where it was it was like yoga. We did, you know, had our mats out on the floor and we did, you know, the burning of the sage. It was mm -hmm. like a cleansing moment mm -hmm. because we sat and sat and talked and just laid things out on the line, talk mm. honestly, no judgment, no anger. Let's get it all out, whatever it was that was on our mind that was bothering us. Oh, wow. And, you know, I was like, sometimes we need that. You know, there's times where I will sit, you know, when he might come home and I'm like, yeah, we need to sit down and we need to talk because a couple of things we need to discuss. <laughs> and we just going to sit down and we're going to talk about it. Whether, right. And he might be like, oh, damn, you know, so he want to go grab that bourbon so he can get his mind <laughs> right. And that's what we do. Right. Okay. You know, whether he won't hear it or not, or, you know, I'm like, look, and sometimes, oh, this is the kind of person, though, that likes to put things off. He don't want to have to discuss it if he don't have to. Mm -hmm. But if I put it in front of him, I'm like, look, this is what we're going to do. This is what mm -hmm. we need to talk about. So, 
you know he i'm not gonna say he avoids confrontation but he avoids confrontation with me okay so. <laughs> um I, before i ask this third question i kind of want to stay on this subject here so when you guys i i like the smudging thing because i to me that's a bit scary because sometimes especially you know like you can't say kim you don't want no judgment and things like that but sometimes it's kind of hard like were there difficult times where you guys had these smudging just, sessions where it was like oh that's really how you feel we didn't have that yeah yeah, yeah we've had that we've had, we had that and and we 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 had to you know, you get your feelings out how you feel about it. I get my feelings out how we feel about it. And we're not going to talk about it anymore. No and, and then we put it in this box and throw it away. And we're mm. not going to talk about it anymore. Okay. Okay. So okay. so we, we've had to do that on, on several occasions. Yeah. Was the was the mindset when you took when you took those things that you were feeling, thinking, and you put them in this box and you threw them away, was the mindset, okay, we do we doing this? We're, I'm not going nowhere. You're not going anywhere. But we said what we needed to say. Now you know how I feel. I know how you feel. We're putting this in the yeah, box. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, okay. So moving what? forward, moving forward, I understand how she feels about this certain situation. And she may understand how I feel about the situation. So therefore, we don't try to cross that path anymore. Got you. Got you. So we, we learn from it. Right. Have you, have either of you read the book, um, uh, The Five Love Languages? I've heard of it, but I have not. Okay, okay. Um, and you may or may not. I do try to suggest this. I'm not getting any no appropriations from this guy, this book. But I know it has been helpful in my young marriage, and it might help because I, I don't know. Do you, uh, I, Otis? You said something at the top of the when we started talking that communication is key. I think this book helps with that communication. Like, um, do you guys still have communication lapses here and there, or is it pretty much good? Sometimes we have those moments. Yeah. Um, I would say that, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. We have, we, we do have those moments um, because I'm a talker. So I am okay. going to talk and I'm going to put, put it in front of him to mm -hmm. make him talk. Okay. Um, but it's something else I would say. As you were saying that, it was something else that I was thinking and I wanted to say, and now it's been totally slipped my mind. But um, we do have our moments. We okay. do. We, and I, what I was going to say, though, too, is that when you always hear the phrase, you know, when you talk about people that's been married and together forever, long time, whatever, long term, that, oh, communication is key. It is. It sounds so cliche, but it's the truth. Yeah, and no, I so agree with cliche, you. But it is the truth because how do you know? what your partner is seeking if you do not have those conversations. Conversation, absolutely. So that's what we we have to keep those lines of communications open. Mm -hmm. Um or we you just won't know. You right. just won't right. know. And, and that's it, where things go wrong. And that's that's where things go wrong and left for a lot of relationships. And and quickly problems. and go left yes. quickly. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I think uh to your point, Kim, when you don't talk, guess what? Now that space is getting filled up with all the things you're thinking, all the things it's he's thinking, up. nobody's answered. Now you're asking the question, but who's guess who's answering? You are. You didn't talk yeah. to your partner to find out what he or she is thinking. You didn't fill right. that space up with all your uh, in your window and thinking and don't even know what's going on. Your mind is playing gym, mental, what I call mental gymnastics. You haven't had a yeah. conversation, but had you just right. took the time to talk to your partner about it, maybe you can get some clarity on some of those things you were thinking. Yep, but what, yeah, what I was going to say is if you guys get a chance and I'll send you, it's a, uh, it's a test you can take as well called the five love languages, but it'll kind of help you find out one, what your, what your individual love language is also help you find out what your partner's love language is and then be able to speak to that love language when necessary. Mm -hmm. And it's a very easy read, very easy read. Like you guys can what do it. Is my love language? Hmm? What is my love language? Um, you you like to be you like to be heard. That's your love language. And what else? You like to be heard, and you like uh, you like attention, and you like to be catered to. I like foot rubs. That's you give me a foot rub. I'm, I'm sorry, foot go. rubs is not a love language. <laughs> that is for me. It is for well, me. Well, no, no. I, and wait, but minute, you I know what? Too. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. This is this is about you guys. Go ahead what 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 i like too that he used to do 
years ago that he doesn't do anymore. It was always the little things for me. Uh -huh. Otis used to do the little things. Like he used to leave me little notes. He used to um, just, I mean, he could go to the store and bring me back my favorite candy bar mm -hmm. or bag of chips or something. And I'm like, oh, he's thinking about me. Like those, it was like just the little thing. I'm not, I'm not one of those chicks that I'm always looking for you to spend a ton of money on me and this mm -hmm. and that because I always felt like I can get my own stuff that I really like. I'm not asking you to buy me anything because I'm right. going to get what I want because mm -hmm. I like, you know, I like certain things and he knows that about me. So I'm going to get what I want. Now, if he gets something for me, I'm not going to turn it down. You know, I'm going to take <laughs> it my husband and he's buying those things for me, but he, he, like every time he's like, baby, what you want for your birthday? Baby, what you want for Mother's Day? Baby, what you want for Christmas? And I'm like, I'll tell him bath and body work. I'll tell him little stuff because right. the big stuff, I'm taking care of myself because I'm going to buy it myself. Mm -hmm. At heart, Otis is a cheap guy, <laughs> but he's not cheap when it comes to the stuff that he wants for himself. Okay. <laughs> you know, when it comes to golf, it's no. Because golf thing. is an expensive sport. Yes, it's an, and I tell him that all the time. I was like, all the stuff, all the money you spent on golf, like seriously. I buy all you stuff, <laughs> but it's still expensive. That and his trucks. Those are the two things. Those are always been his vices. Okay, is his his golfing anything dealing with golf? Because he got about three sets of golf clubs, <laughs> and he always, but he always buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. So he does okay. that a lot. Okay, and then. I swear to God, he used to get a truck, a new truck every two years. I'm like, if you don't sit down somewhere and keep a new vehicle, <laughs> the last new truck he had, now to be fair, the last new truck now that he has, it'll be five years this year that he'd have had it. And wow. I'm shocked. I'm shocked <laughs> because when he bought it, Al, let me tell you, <laughs> he bought that one <laughs> when I was gone on my birthday trip. I was oh, gone wow. On girls' trip. And I come. <laughs> Back, I in matter of fact, here he was away because he used to um, uh, work Monday through Friday, uh, you know, on on site. So he's uh -huh. on travel for work, consulting, okay. uh, you know. So with his engineering stuff. So Monday through Friday, he's gone, and I left on a Thursday, and he was like, "Well, just drive my truck." and put it in the parking garage at the airport, send me a picture of where it's at so I know to get it when I come in on Friday. All right, bet. I put a Ford F-150 in that parking garage. That's what I put in there. When I got picked up on that Sunday from the airport when I came back in, he picks me up in a Dodge Ram. And I said, you better be test driving it. <laughs> He done went and bought a truck without telling me. He got rid of that F-150 that weekend, that Friday or Saturday. And the came, I said, you know what? I came with you. I swear <laughs> to God, you did not have clearance to do this. Oh, my but, God. But he's like, baby, I swear this is the last time. This is the last time. <laughs> Otis, Otis, did you already have this plan when she was on her way to her girl's he trip? He snuck and did it behind my back. This was my birthday weekend when I turned 50. You know, this is the year I turned 50, I was, five years ago. I was kind of working it a little bit a couple <laughs> weeks before, and it just happened to happen when she was gone. Go. It just but, so happened to happen while she was it gone. It just so happened to happen. But let me say, you know, you cannot make any purchases like that unless your mate is on board. That okay. is a... That is, that is something that is. So you want to clear that out for the audience when they yeah, do air? You found, you found <laughs> that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I found out the hard way. That that wasn't the first time. Okay. But always make sure that you and your your partner, your mate, are on the same page when you make a large purchase yeah. like. Because yeah. he always that was his thing. Every two years, I was like, I swear to God, seem like you get a vehicle every two years. Would you stop? You know. What they lease vehicles? I, I, Kim, um, were they lease? Were they lease vehicles? There, no. were, there were a couple of leases. A there. couple of them were, but the majority of them not. No, not oh. at all. So what? No, okay. Yeah. So Kim, why were you taking issue with that? Was it affecting your finances? Yeah, I feel like it was. I feel like it was. So like every car note was a higher car note every time. I'm like, this, seriously. This, oh, this last car note was the same as the last one. No, it wasn't. It was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And for me. I will ride a car until it don't ride no more. Okay. I, I ain't got to get, you know, the car I have is 10 years old right now. It I bought it in 2013 and here it is 2023 and I'm riding <laughs> the wheels fall off. 
<laughs> I'm ready. I, I want, I'm like mentally, I say, okay, my next car is going to be this, but he be like, come on, baby, let's go get it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with this one. I'm riding it to the wheel. Hey, hey, Kim, he wants you to go get that new car. So here I have an excuse to go get him a new one. <laughs> Listen, it was, yup, there you go. Yup. And there, and, and see, it was new when I bought it. So <laughs> the 2013 Ford Edge, and I'm riding it till the wheels fall off. Oh my God, y'all are hilarious. Okay, here's Ain't the third. Nothing wrong with it. Here's the third question. What has loving me taught you about yourself? Loving me. Or are you loving me taught yeah. you about yourself. Mm -hmm. Wait, say that again. I'm trying to understand. What, what, what has loving your husband taught you about yourself? And what has loving your wife taught you about yourself? Mm. That I have to mm. that I have to be accepting. I have to be accepting. I've, I've become accepting okay. of all of his faults. Mm -hmm. The things that I don't like about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Let me, let, let me just know. Let me just say this. 28 years of marriage affords you guys that opportunity. Like some people mm -hmm. might be afraid to say exactly what you said mm -hmm. it the way that you just said it. Yes. And your mm -hmm. husband is okay with that because at the end of the day, I know you love this man, but you don't always like him. He loves you, but he I'm sure he doesn't always like you. 28 years of marriage mm -hmm. affords you that but I think sometime when you're married, married, whether you've been married 28 years or 20, uh, uh, 12 years, sometimes you may be afraid yep. to say that because you don't want to offend the other person. But at some point, you have to get past that. Absolutely. It's, it's the quirks and the, the things that I've noticed has changed through the years. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure he's probably noticed some things changed about me through the years. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not the same people we were when we were 24 and 25 years old. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So for me, I always say to him, in the beginning, you were much more neater mm -hmm. than you are now. Mm -hmm. I am a neat freak. Okay. And I have to, I have to deal with, what is it? What word? Um, the one that's down low. Nope. The other one behind it. We're going to slide yes. in the rook. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. No, that's life. It's okay. <laughs> okay, he's getting it for you, buddy. Okay, go ahead and get it. Okay. Uh -oh. So, um, he was a lot neater. Um, he was a lot more specific about things, and and I don't know. I, and now he's just like whatever. It's whatever now. Like he knows that he comes home and he puts his keys and phones and da, 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 and, and I'm like, oh my God. And it bothers me. You, or you sound just, like you sound like my wife. She got she got this OCD. She said I'm she says I'm cluttery. Like, and then she talks to my family. They was like, well, you know, they talk about how I was when I was baby. single and how how neat and everything. And she was like, neat. Like, really? She was like, she don't see that. And yeah. I know for me, um, and I don't know if you can attest, when I was single, I do it. Like I tell her, I don't. I was more responsible uh, for me because it was just me being responsible for me. So, and then some of that, some of the stuff that I was doing, which mm -hmm. I pretty much always done up until I, I actually got involved in like, you know, got involved in relationships. Like my house would be, or my apartment would be neat for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, cause I know that would impress them. <laughs> so I'm doing this. It was too. Yeah. So I'm impressed them. But I feel like once I got married, I told my wife, not, it's not her fault. I don't blame her. But sometimes I think as men, and you attest to this, oh, to let me know if I'm uh, incorrect or not, but you, your wife assumes, a, and I think we, this happens for both uh, the man and the woman, certain things that you're used to doing, you don't have to do anymore because the other person assumes that responsibility. So you get- That's left. taking advantage. That's taking advantage. I just want you to know that. That's what that is. <laughs> That's what that is. And I hope your wife listens to this. That's taking advantage. <laughs> Because that's exactly what that is. Because that's what he has done. That's, that's what I get. That's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. And I feel like because of him and my son, I'm like, y'all both knew. Like, my son, you grew up getting out of your bed every morning, making your bed, making sure everything is, you know, together. He don't care no more. He don't care no more. I make up for you. 
I make my bed. You don't. I do pull because up my I'm side. Still in the cover. Cover. Okay, you'll pull up, up your side of the cover, cover until I'm out. Yeah, I'm still in it by the time you leave. But, but the st- I mean, I will sometimes let stuff sit on purpose to see how long it's going to sit there before somebody move it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I know I ain't the only one who see this. How many days has it been? I know I ain't the only one who done seen this. So they, both of them, I get him and my son, they kind of gang up on me and it's like, you just OCD. You know, I'm like, no, it's just a time. Everything has its place. She's OCD, Al. She and really when She's I'm OCD. talking about the surface of the home, your ki- our kitchen and our living room is open floor. So it's like open. Let's make sure all of that is cleared out. Pictures are clean. Babe, 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 I come in. Yes. I'm, I'm, I can tell you this I right now. Phone. I set my phone and my keys and maybe my charger in one spot every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm com- when I leave out in the morning, I need to see it in that spot so I will grab it. That's all. Then why do we put a key hook by the door in the back if you don't put your keys up there? <laughs> That's where everybody else is keeping. See, you see what I'm saying? It's different rules. It's different rules for him. <laughs> you know, I have, I have by the front door, I have a bench, a storage bench for shoes. It's a, you know, so you can sit and then you have storage little cubbies for shoes. Right. He's been good at that. Trying to make sure his shoes is in there when he come in the door because he'll take his shoes off. Okay, fine. But I'm like, just the, the backpack in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, come on. That kind of stuff irks and bothers me. Okay. So I'm, I, you know, sometimes I just feel like I'm losing, I'm, I'm fighting a losing battle. Mm-hmm. But so, but. so to answer, so to answer the question, you become more accepting. That's what you've learned yeah. about yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have. But I also, you know, because I feel like you know during the week I'm always wiping, cleaning, sweeping, dusting something. You know, I'm always doing those types of things. But I do have because I don't. Him and my son, they don't like to clean the way I like to clean, and they know how I like to clean. They're like, you just so extra. So <laughs> I just I have I have a cleaning lady come in once a month to help me out so that okay. they don't have to do it, you know. Because I do what I can during the week, every week, and then when I have her come in, she does what I need her to do. And yeah. Yeah. Now my, my wife used to get your so- turn. I'm sorry. My, my, I just want to say this before we always ask. My wife used to get so irritated. Like I would set my jackets on, uh, I think the dining room chair, table. on a chair. But I've I've gotten a lot better at just taking it and hanging it up. Because of course she'll come by you. Because Otis, it sound like your wife do the same thing. You set it down, you go back to look for it. It's gone. Done that. Or yeah, she done that. <laughs> done or, that. or she'll say, uh, "Are you gonna hang this up?" Even the laundry, yeah. your laundry basket. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can I answer? You me? go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I think with me, um, so to, so make sure you understand the question. What has loving your wife taught you about yourself? It, it's taught me how to to dig deeper and when communicating with her and telling her what's really wrong, what's really wrong with me or what mm-hmm. I have a problem with, mm-hmm. and us being able to talk that out. Okay. Because because a lot of times people, they, they don't dig deep enough to talk it out and then you still have the problem. So is it is yeah. it a situation? And I always say we talk about communication, but I right. like to say honest communication, because if if he tell if if Kim walks away from the conversation thinking that you've told her what the issue is and she's um, and she's trying, OK, I'm a, I'll do what I can to fix it mm-hmm. but you didn't tell her everything that was wrong she walking away thinking everything is okay hey I, i'm addressing the issue but you right. wasn't honest with her completely because of for whatever reason right I, i've gotten a lot better in that okay that because okay because I, I wasn't very good at that i was okay. i was your typical african-american male okay we were we were we were kind of reserved on expressing our feelings but I, i'm getting a lot better at that okay so she will understand what my true need is so she can address the need because it sounds like when you don't do that you're working against yourself yep. yeah yeah absolutely yeah you're yep. working against yourself because if your wife doesn't have the full picture how can she make a proper assessment to know what's yep. going on you know what i'm saying like it's not her fault right. she right. couldn't fix it you didn't tell her everything that was going on and i'm sure that would right. probably be her response like you didn't tell me that you know right, right. and vice versa right. yeah you know i i think i think the biggest problem that people make when they get married they think marriage is the end game. It's the oh, end. Oh no! 
It's not. It's just it's the not. beginning. Yes. It, it, just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you you have to be um, be willing and be vulnerable to learn the behaviors of your mate. Yes. Because all of that stuff in the beginning while you're dating, that's just fluff. <laughs> it, it's just fluff it because is. you you really don't have any arguments when you're dating. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's <laughs> this. But once you get married and say I do. That's when the shit really hits the fan. Man, right. When because you're no longer you know showing what? your you're not you're no longer showing your representative. You're showing because at some point your you got you, you get tired of keep you get tired of keeping up that facade, so to speak. Facade. Like this, this is what I am, you, you know. Man, you this go. is the, what it the is. quicker the quicker you can get to it, the better off you'll be. Absolutely. That's why I probably say the five year itch. Yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, okay. That's probably about right. Um mm -hmm. has your definition of marriage changed since being married? How and why? Has your definition of marriage changed since being married? How and why? I would say, yes, it's changed because marriage is, it's, it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. It's, it's truly a partnership. What was your and, definition and you before have, getting married? Uh, then? Well, it, I mean. Had either one of you ever been married before? No. no. Okay. No. So um, it, it's truly a partnership where you have to, you're going to have to give probably a lot more than you receive. Okay. At least on, from the male perspective, coming from my side. Really? Okay. I think so. Okay. But I mean, you may have a counter to that, but. Um, I, I, I'd like to know more about that eventually, what you mean, <laughs> like, give more than you receive. Uh, but for me, I'm going to say that I, that's a, that's a, one, that's a really good question. Yeah, a, Thank you. Because I feel like witnessing my parents' marriage, I knew that's not what it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mm -hmm. parents, I've, I've witnessed a lot with my nope. parents growing up, being the oldest uh -huh. I've witnessed a lot. Okay. And they ended up getting divorced in 92. But my dad did a lot of wrong during those years that mm -hmm. I was aware of because he was a street guy. Mm -hmm. And me being and him having all girls, it's like, and me being the oldest, I used to be around him. Like he used to have me around a lot of stuff. And my dad, he used to kick it with me and let me know, you don't want a nigga like me. Wow. And I'm like, I love my dad dearly. May he rest in peace because both of my parents are deceased. Okay. But he always kicked the real to me. Mm -hmm. And when he told me, you don't want a man like me, I was like, you right, I don't. Wow. Like, I love him dearly, but didn't I knew what he was about. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I definitely want the opposite of what he was. Like, he was a good dude to a lot of people, but he was a street guy at the same time. But you dated and a lot of street guys though, right? I did. And I knew, you know, I, let me say this. I kicked it with a lot of street guys. Okay. You know, I knew I was, I wasn't going to be in any, any long-term relationships with any of them. Let's you say knew that. that That's you what knew I was that. Say. Yes. I knew okay. that off rip. Like, oh okay. yeah, these aren't like, they good time. You know, I can have a good time with them. Right. You know, you can spend your money on me because that's what they were about. You right. know what I'm saying? But for my dad, I knew that he was not good to my mom, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I knew, and then maybe that's why initially I thought I would never get married because okay. I'm like, this ain't that, you know, right. I'm like, this is not what I want. I don't want this. Okay. And I saw what my mom endured. Okay. But on the flip side of that, I also had two sets of grandparents. My dad's parents ended up getting divorced in the late seventies. My mom's parents married to the day they both died. You know what oh, I'm wow. saying? Yeah. So that to me, I'm like, but, but that wasn't always 100%, you know, but they were my, like, that was what I had to look up to. Those okay. My parents. And I'm like, okay. I just felt like my grandfather was like uh, tone deaf to a lot of things that my grandmother used to say. <laughs> <laughs> As he knew my grandfather, my grandmother used to just always call his dad. He, it's like he used to just tune her out. And I'm like, daddy, 
Do you hear mama talk to me? He was like, yeah, I hear it. She always talking. Like, I, I don't know what she want. I don't know. You know, and I just be like, oh, my God. So I, I just thought they were, they were a funny couple to me. They were okay. funny. But I love my grandparents dearly. But I figured, like, if that was the model relationship, that that's one that I would have modeled after because they were married to the day they died. Okay. You know, my grandfather died before my grandmother. But, you know, that's what they, that's what I knew. And he took care of my grandmother. Okay. You know, she always had a job. And she, she would always say, you ain't take care of me. I got my own job. <laughs> <laughs> but he, they took care of each other. Each other. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I initially had that mindset, like, I'm never getting married. Because, I, you know, especially coming up during the 80s and the 90s, I'm like, yeah. I ain't got time to be dealing with these dudes. Right. Because I'm being, no. You know, but <laughs> he was different. Okay. So... I will say that if we weren't together now, I would I would probably never get married again. I would probably never because I don't have time to invest and waste on another relationship. Well, okay. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a waste. that's for me. You just have to you'd have to groom somebody. I'm too old for that though. I, I mean, it's what you're doing. You're actually grooming somebody to your standards. That's what's happening. I tried that with you. We still. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, with y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> My God. So, and then, and, and this is probably a given. Does he or she still make you laugh? It clearly y'all do. Absolutely, all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he's the jokester. Is he? He is the jokester. I'm the more serious one. He is the jokester. I'm like, you play too much. He play too much. A lot. <laughs> you know, he do. He do. Okay. All right. He is definitely that one in this relationship. I mean, we may have our moments where I, we both might look at each other at a certain instance and we, or say something, and then we just both both just burst out laughing. Oh, but wow. he is the daily, typical, got it, and he, it's him. I'm not that. <laughs> you like, uh, I need you to dial it in, like, see, like bro, I'm yeah. serious right now. Yeah. So has there ever me. been time where you're trying to have a serious conversation with him and he joking, you had to give him the look like, I ain't playing, like, I'm serious right now. Or does he know when you're ready to have a conversation? He know. Oh, I know. Okay. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. What, a, Otis? What is that, Otis? What does that look like? That look is like, you know what? We had we had a, a situation that occurred. I can't remember what it was, but I was getting ready to go out somewhere, uh -huh. and I'll never forget this day till the day I die. <laughs> and she was walking. I was at the door, and she was walking down the hallway to me. And she was walking and talking to me. And I was like, oh, my God, what the hell is she talking about? What did I do? <laughs> was she, it in this house? It wasn't in this house. It was, uh, I think it was Cherrywood. Oh, back in Michigan. I think it was back okay. in Michigan. And, and I just remember the look on her face. And she was just walking and talking. And she was kind of wagging her finger at me. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I wish I could What remember. the hell have I married? <laughs> I wish I could oh, remember. And, and okay. you know, and you understand or you know the body and language. You know the body language and the theatrics. Okay, I can't go nowhere yet. I got to stay here and listen to what she get ready to say. Because if I walk out, it's going to be hell probably for the next two what, or three what days. You, Otis, what did you recall it? The theatrics? <laughs> yeah, the theatrics. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> oh, oh, my, oh God. my God. Y'all, that hey, 28 years show. I'm glad y'all still having fun. That's that is beautiful. I oh, that's absolutely beautiful. So let me ask you this: what season would you say your marriage is in? And please describe, meaning that is it uh because I had one couple describe their marriage. Uh they've been they have been married about as long as you guys have, but they said rejuvenation. So, like what adjective would you give your marriage? Like what if you had to describe your marriage, how would you describe it? Mm. I'll let you go first. I'm thinking mm. that's a very good question well, as far had, as what season. Adjective to describe. Because what I'm assuming as far as the season that it's yeah, in. Yeah, the season, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, the season you guys were in, I think in 2008 when you had to move there, that was transitioning. Um, yeah. it, it was not yeah. good. It yeah, was a bad, it was, that was a bad season. That was probably fall or winter. It was yeah. actually the summer. Well, no, no, no. Speaking. I meant the season. Oh, meaning the, yeah. the, the season yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes, how it felt. Okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, that is I, a I would say I would say probably 
I would say summer would be the season because, um, you know, each day you don't know how hot it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So you have to <laughs> you have to prepare for the heat each day. So it, I'm looking I mean, like, huh? There, 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 there's a lot of compromise going on. There's compromise for where we go to eat. There's compromise on what we go watch on TV. There's compromise on are you gonna turn the damn AC down or I'm gonna freeze over here? There's compromise <laughs> on. Are you going to take this room and watch TV? Or are you going to go upstairs and watch TV? Because I want one of them. Because we got TVs <laughs> in every room in the house. So so there's there's compromise. I mean, so you, that's what are marriage y'all, is all about. Are y'all in a season of compromise? Uh, that, that, that's For more him. Like- for him. I feel like, just listening to your analogies, I feel like we're in the season of coasting. We're coasting. We're coastal. Okay. We're just we're just even kill going with the flow. Okay, I like that Kim. Um, because that to me that's what every day feels like. Okay. It's like we're just really going with the flow. But how you were just explaining from your perspective, the compromise, you know, the daily what we eat and what we doing, what we watch TV, what we do, you know what I'm saying. Those are the day to day things. And my thing is is that. Contrary to popular, popular belief, because everybody used to see how much I used to post food, I'm cooking this, I'm cooking that, all on the Facebook, whatever. I hate cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I hate cooking. So when I'm here by myself and he's away, I absolutely love it because I don't have to worry about nobody saying, baby, what we eating? Baby, what you cooking? Mm-hmm. I ain't got to worry about none of that because it's just me. If I want to go in this refrigerator and make me a salad or leave this house and go grab a salad, that's what I can do. Because right. I'm just thinking about me. Right. My son, he got a boo now. So he gone half the time. <laughs> he booed up. You know what I'm saying? He he doing whatever it is he doing, whether it's gone up north to, you know, visit and see about his mom or going away golfing or whatever it is that he's doing or working even, I just worrying about myself. And I love that because I ain't got to worry about nobody asking me what we eat. I hate that question. Right. I hate that question. So I, when I am cooking, I try to, during the week, I try to think of something quick and simple. And it is, and I'm like, I'll, I'll ask once. If they don't give me any suggestions, I'm cooking what I feel is simple. And that's that. Okay. And y'all gonna eat it. That is, <laughs> is what it is. So I, I like that. Like, you know, I like that coasting though. I mean, you guys have, Y'all, yeah. y'all, 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 it's, just, y'all, it's whatever it is for the yeah. day. Like, all right, well, well he'd be like, baby, would you, baby, and I'm like, it's whatever you want to do. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, because I always say that I'm not picky. I tell him that all the time. As far as food, anyway, I'm like, I'm going to find something to eat wherever we go. So okay. don't, if it's something you want, you, that's what you stick with. And I'm going to pick out something wherever that is, if okay. it's not here in this house. So, yeah, I think we're in that season of co- we're coasting. I like that we're because to me, to me, the the stuff that Otis re- is referring to, those are to me, uh, you're traveling along the highway, so you're coasting highway smooth. What restaurant are we going to? We need to stop and go right. to the bathroom. What, you feel what I'm what saying? Exit like we taking this day. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I like that analogy, uh, Kim. I really do. Yeah. You kind of like kind of cold. Y'all got 28 years in. You know what I'm saying? 28 mm-hmm. years in. When will it be 29? Next oh, year. Next July. Next year. Next July. That's right. So y'all did just celebrate an anniversary. Okay. So 2025 will be 30 years. So okay. No, no, 29 years. Wedding. I'm sorry. 29 years. Y'all yeah, anniversary 29. is when. 29 will be July 8th of 2024. Of this year. 2024. Oh, 2024. We're, we're, we haven't arrived yeah. at 28 yet. 28 is, is July this July, year. July. Oh, July okay. Got you. Year. Okay. July, July yeah. of this year. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. Gotcha. 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 Um, yeah. What advice would you give yourself if you could go back in time before you got married to your spouse? What would you, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> Would you like to take that one? Because you said that before. <laughs> I don't. I don't recall what the hell I said. What I. What, what I did. You wouldn't have got married yet. Oh, you know, I think. <laughs> you know, I, I think we probably would have dated longer. Yes. Okay. I think so. We, we would have dated longer. Definitely. We, we would have, because okay. there were some things that I needed to get ironed out first. Those mm-hmm. hurdles. Our hurdles. Yeah. We I, yeah I needed some hurdles. I needed to get out of the way. 
before bringing her into it and subjecting her to all of that other stuff. Okay. Okay. Prior, early in our relationship. Okay. Yeah. All right, what that's, about you? That's what, we, we got married, I think, what, I was 25, you were 26, going on 26. Yeah. So probably, I, I think a good marrying age for anybody is 28 to 30. Because there are some things you have to get established and get out of your system before you I get think married. 35 is a good marrying age. You don't have to get married young. Well, you don't have to, but if you um. want to have some children, some children. <laughs> some children you, you know what? I uh I have to I think I have to lean more towards what Kim is saying because I feel like to me, especially for men. Because he married. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I just don't been think, all, it's almost five years for you guys, right? Yeah, it'll be well, this will be number four. It'll be a year four. We are almost five years, yes. Almost. I thought it was twenty eighteen. It was. Ooh, I hope my wife don't hear See? <laughs> Yeah, we'll be celebrating number five. Oh, she I know she she probably upstairs listening. I'm gonna get it when I get back. You. Huh? That was the year that I worked out with you at, at Old Park High School and Kelly came up there and met me. Yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was 2018. Cause I remember Kelly I was Burke. traveling that year. That was because yep. we were there. Yeah, Kelly Burke. Because yep. we were there for um it was the weekend of Sharon's 70th birthday, and I went and worked out with him. Yeah. Um so and I remember that was 2018. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, see, Oops. yep. And you was getting married up. Right. So <laughs> uh, but I was to what I was gonna say is for men, and I used to hate to admit this, but it's just it's just true. Women mature so much faster than us. I don't think men should get married until after they're 30. Yeah. And that was my issue in my first relationship with my daughter's father. He 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 just was not ready. Mm -hmm. And I remember. <laughs> What's funny is and this is kind of going back to the early, to one of the early questions of you know when he asked me to marry him and I said yes and we went around to all my family and whatnot. I remember talking to my grandmother, my mom's mom, and telling her that I was going to be getting married. I was like, Mom, I'm engaged because I called my grandmother mom, mm -hmm. and I said I'm gonna I'm, I'm engaged. I'm going to be getting married. And she's I remember her sitting. You know how funny my grandma was. She <laughs> said, Oh, that's nice. And she doing some. She was doing something, looking at some papers or something. And she looked up at me and she said, "To who?" <laughs> she goes, "To who?" She said, "Otis or Sean?" And I said, "Otis." And she said, "Oh, okay then." Like that, and just like left it at that. So I just, I just thought that that was that was funny to oh, mention. Oh wow, it was okay. funny with that. But yeah. Yeah, I just think that because women's y'all mature so much faster than we do. I think men definitely into their thirties, and then women. My father definitely said that about yeah. my first relationship. He said, you know, he wasn't ready for you. Yeah, and his own father said that to him. He mm -hmm. was like, he wasn't ready for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 were. My dad said you were way more mature than he was, mm -hmm. and and I'm, it's it's unfortunate, but I guess I was. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it's no, no. I never say any. I've never said anything negative about him. It's no slight to him at all because he has always been a good dude. Will give you the shirt off your back and always has done for his daughter, you know. But he just was immature at the time of our life where we where y'all were at the time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. when we became parents. Okay. So, and I just knew, I was like, I can't, mm -mm, this is not for me. I can't do it. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get close to the end. So I got a couple more questions okay. I want to ask from the game. Right. Okay. Do you feel like you have ever hurt me in this relationship? If so, explain. Mm. Well, let's see. There's been a couple times, I would say. And it's something recent, um, you know, something that I always bring up to him. And we always say, you know, we're going to forget about it, but we never do. Me, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, it is uh, one of the instances was back in his hometown, mm -hmm. um, which is probably, which is mainly the reason today why I don't go with him when he goes back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I feel like I put in, I say, I put in my time, so I don't necessarily have to go anymore. But it was a time where, um, matter of fact, I think it was your reunion weekend. It was his 30 year reunion, 25 year reunion weekend, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was his uh, 25 year reunion weekend. And I was hanging out with a couple of the other wives 
and we went to the movies and after the movies, you know, the other wives, they called their husbands, see where they were at. They were at this, you know, restaurant bar, restaurant, yeah. you know, hanging out, getting something to eat. And they were like, come on up here, you know, come on up. This is where we at. And, you know, obviously out of courtesy, I'm letting Otis know, you know, hey, we just finished the movie. Where are you guys at? And I, he tells me where he at. And I was like, well, um, is it okay if I come on up? He told me no. Mm. And I'm like, huh? See, I, I didn't know. Don't matter. Oh. Let me finish my story. Okay, go ahead. And <laughs> I go, and I was like, but I'm with these other ladies, and I'm driving, and they're like, this is where the fellas is at. We're going to go on up there. So we go, and I'm like, but my, my nigga done told me no. I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, but I'm going anyway. So uh -huh. I just act like I don't see him. I don't care. Right. Now I got an attitude. But I'm there <laughs> with the other wives. And so we come in, we done got ourselves our little table. You know, everybody go over and say hey to their husbands, give them kids. I ain't say shit to Otis. I ain't say nothing. Because now I'm pissed off. And he looking at me like, you know, and I'm like, mm -mm, because guess what? So and so's wife said they come, so and so wife said, yeah, this is where we at. And you told me no. See, baby, I didn't know. That wasn't the It audible. don't matter. That wasn't the audible. Like the time. <laughs> it, <don't laughs> it was just the fellas having some beers and chicken. That wasn't the audible at the time. I didn't he told, know. I didn't know they said it. And I, I was like, know. it don't matter. Because you think that so-and-so check with this guy and that guy and say, oh, my wife just called and said, I, I told her, come on up here. This is where right. we at. I didn't right. know. Like I said, I didn't so, know. You can't he felt like it was strict, a strict guy's thing. So the okay. women shouldn't be bang. But oh. the other husbands didn't feel that way. They told their wives where they were. I said, yeah, come on up here. This is where we at. <laughs> so I was like, mm -mm, that's, you know what? You go home. You have that. You hang out with your fellas. That's it is what it is. I but, ain't got to ever see, come back home with we, you no more. <laughs> We and that's we, where I'm at with it. We can't get past that right now. And, and that's, that's where I'm at. So that's me being petty. I'm not. I don't uh, go uh, home with him no more. Okay. Okay. So Hall of Fame, pay. because Kenton, Kenton, Ohio is obviously known for Hall of Fame. Right. Um, his his mom lives. You know, he grew up right down the street from the Hall of Fame. You know, the stadium, all that. It's 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 a big to do in that city, uh -huh. and it's even more of a big to do now because they done spruced every like everything is just redone they done okay. built new stadiums all this stuff is just like new and it that's a small little town that really ain't got nothing else going on they got one little mall so we talk they, about my city. that town just as <laughs> country as it want to be and <laughs> ain't nothing going on in that city but that weekend hall of fame weekend is like a big thing for them okay and they bring, it's like it just so many stars come to the city and you know uh -huh. i'll be like where they stay at they must stay in cleveland and drive over because they ain't nothing here <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> But it's Kim, it you are hilarious. <laughs> right, it brings money to the city. And I've always said, why you have never taken me to Hall of Fame? I guess I will never know because I'm not going. I won't no. go see, because see, she, that's she, his she, weekend to hang she, out with she, his she, friends. So I just want to gotta be able to put that behind her and say, oh, and I've apologized as much <laughs> as I can. I, I've apologized from, from the top to the bottom. And I just want her to come and enjoy it. Everybody, we're gonna bring our wives and we're gonna have a good time. But she, how long ago was this? Whew, man, what was that about? 17, 2017. Okay, 17. Kim, are you still holding mm -hmm. on to that? She's still holding on. So I just don't go. Oh, my God. So I'm like, uh-uh, nope, that's what he want to do. He want to hang out with his friends. Oh, oh my God. So, oh, so like, Kim, you, you explain. So I'm let him hang out with his friends. And I'm like, because, <laughs> you know, I hang out with my people when I go to Detroit. So it is what it is. But he hang out with the same people, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't necessarily have to hang but out you with do. the same people because I got do. my own people. But you do. <laughs> I got my own people in the deep. You so, do. so Kim, you answered the question. The question was, do you feel like, uh, do you do you like, do you feel like you have ever hurt me in this relationship and explain why? What about you, Otis? Do you feel like she's ever hurt you in this relationship and explain why? Oh, boy. Oh. Mm. You know, that they probably how I can answer that, maybe that situ that same situation where I want her to come and be a part of it and she won't. Okay. And I and I that that hurts me a lot because I want us to 
I want us to go as couples so okay. she can see it. And I don't want her thinking it's something that's some mischievous behavior going on when we go as the fellas. Okay. I want her to see it for what it is. Okay. And, and and then we can probably make something of it each year. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, which of the qualities do you think would make me or make uh make a great parent explain? Which of the qualities that would mm -hmm. make me a great parent? Which of no, I'm sorry, which of your qualities do you think would make you a great parent? Explain why. Hmm. My qualities would make me a great parent. I I, I think I'm I'm kind of for me, I'm kind of a an even keel kind of person. And I, I could pretty much sit and talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think, you know, I used to coach, I coached high school football and Pop Warner football. Okay. So my, my approach to talking to young people is, I, I think I have a very good approach because I, I've lived it and I understand what you're going through. So take the time and listen to me when mm -hmm. I'm here ready to tell you, I'm here to give you the game. Mm -hmm. So take the time and listen and I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to prepare yourself, your body, your mind for the things you wanna do. So you so, think that those, that quality of being able to, um, I don't know, is that you're approachable or like I, that, that's I, a quality say, you feel that makes you a good parent? I, 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 think, I, I think I'm approachable, approachable and, uh, man, what else would make me a good parent? I mean, I, I know I'm stern when I need to be stern. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that makes me a good parent because I, I'm able to to talk to to our children and kind of, you know, give them all of the the roadblocks that we were able to maneuver around. You know they ain't gonna listen though, right? They they don't. They don't, they don't. listen. They don't. They, they don't, don't listen, do. but we because we, we didn't listen them anyway. Yeah, we give it to them anyway. And yeah, we give it to them back anyway, say, but we didn't listen. I should have listened. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you were right. Yeah, right. you were right. Mm -hmm. and, what about and, you, know, you Kim? We were same, same way. I'm listening to this conversation and I was, I picked up my phone to pull up a, a conversation that I had with my kids with regard to that. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking, I'm trying to see it if okay and i just found it it's a, it's a it's a text that i had with my kids back in october of 2019 mm -hmm. and so that so your question made me think about this question um as far as the type of parent because i feel i feel like i'm an attentive parent okay and that i I listen to my kids. I'm there for my kids. They know I got their backs, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, this is the, I pulled it up. I literally just found it. And it says, I asked them the question of, I said, I'm taking a pill here, you know, by asking you this question, but I need both of you to be very honest with your feedback. How bad of a person do you think your mom is as far as parenting? And do either of you feel that you can never come and talk to me about serious matters? Okay. And my son said at the time, okay, my son said at the time, so this was just him being shy of his 19th birthday. Okay. So he said, you're not a bad person. And yeah, I feel like I can come and talk to you, even though I may not. Mm. So that's key. Mm -hmm. My daughter said and at this time she's 29 years old she said you aren't a bad person you can be a little much to deal with sometimes especially if something doesn't make sense to you but you're not a bad person and I can't, and I wish I could remember what made me ask them that question at the time? So it's okay. probably one of the, it could have been a conversation that Otis and I was having mm -hmm. because 
he, I remember him saying something to me before about that's why the kids don't come to you. And I'm like, they come and talk to me all the time. Like mm-hmm. me and Javon, I feel like we kick it all the time. Right. And then my daughter went on to also say, personally, I naturally have a problem talking about serious issues in general, but I desire, she says, but, I, but, di- but in dire situations, I will eventually come to you when it's necessary. Okay. She said, I'm not even sure if I'm answering your question or not, but okay. you know, yeah. but yeah, I just feel like. And how did you digest that? Your question made me ask, made me think about something yeah. that, you know, a conversation I had with my kids. How did you digest that? I take it in stride. Okay. Because I feel like that's something that I can work on by their feedback. Okay. You know, because I feel like I've always had an open door with them. But I've also felt like with my parenting, my daughter has definitely been different from parenting my son. And my daughter was just different, man. (laughs) She was different. Like, I feel like she was harder than my son. My son was easier. Mm -hmm. She was always just different because she, she's she's more like her dad. She's, but she's also the extrovert. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? She's, she was the party girl, the always in the know she's the popular person my son was more laid back low key Mm -hmm. and so she was just different so it was always a challenge with her okay it was always a challenge with her because i always felt like she was lying about something you know what i'm saying (laughs) do you i always call her my lying child well okay and and my son he always was like whether i wanted to hear it or not he was just gonna kick it real with me like he's gonna tell me he's gonna be honest Okay. Even to this day, he's like, you might not want to hear this, but you know, he, <laughs> yeah, he is gonna be honest. And I and I appreciate that about him. Right. It do took you a minute for my daughter to get there? Right. It, do you guys take that same inventory with one another? Where you ask, like, hey, you know, because my 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 question to you, my one of my next questions to you was, do you feel do you consider yourself a good husband and wife? And if so, um, you know, why? Why or why not? I do. I do. I do. Absolutely. I feel like I am a a good wife, a good mate, a good friend, a good lover, uh, all of these things to Otis because I feel like I'm always honest with him and I expect that same courtesy. Mm -hmm. Um, There's times when I tell him, I feel like you're lying. I don't feel like you're being honest Mm -hmm. because I know when something's wrong with him, Mm -hmm. but I feel like he does not want me to worry about whatever it is that may be going on with him. But I feel like his energy is off and it's shifted. And I know, and I feel that. So I'm like, I try to give him his space and let him be like, I'm here when you are ready to talk because I know that there's something wrong with you. Okay. And I'm just, you know, I just want you to be real about the situation. But I'm always 28 years. Yeah. I lay it all out. I'd be yeah. like, yeah, here's the situation with me. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I'm going through. Here's what I'm thinking. Whether it's with somebody, as far as the kids, a friend, a family member, I lay it all out with him. Uh, even if it's a job situation, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I'm, cause I'm, I'm a talker. Okay. Excuse me, with him. Not with everybody. Okay. But with him. Okay. So, what what was that question again? So the question is, do you consider yourself to be a good husband? Uh, and how or why? Yeah, and was there ever yeah. a time where you felt like you were not? And why? Um, I, I would consider myself a good husband. Um, there are, you know, there are certain things or certain situations where a guy is just going to be a guy and he's not going to be forthcoming with a whole lot of information that he is mm-hmm. processing mm-hmm. like she said mm-hmm. and there are some things that i'm going to try and work through by myself mm-hmm. and maybe that. not include uh her on it but eventually i will circle back and then we will talk about it okay okay once i once i've worked through it right you've had a but, but she's absolutely right i, I mean I'm, I'm not hard to read she knows when when something is bothering me or maybe perturbed about something. So she'll she she can read me. So same thing with him. He can yeah, read I, me I too. Can read her too. Yeah. 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 And you know uh, what? I just uh, give her her space. Right. And I think that's important though. When you when you're in a relationship, mm-hmm. 
because everybody's I'm a talker too, Kim. I was I can't say that I always was was a talker, but I am a mm-hmm. talker, and I feel like you have to give your partner that time and space to process whatever it is they pro- need to process, right? So that they can. Mm-hmm. So they, they don't feel uncomfortable with sharing with you whatever it is they need to share with you. You know what I'm right. saying? Because my wife will be like, oh, right. what's wrong? What's wrong? Or I either ask her what's wrong. And I, I've i learned to give her that time she may mm-hmm. need to say what she needs to say. Because sometimes it ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Maybe at the time when you Absolutely. ask, it, it may come out wrong. And then now that's another issue yep. that we have to deal with. So I yeah. totally understand that. Right. And that's what we try to avoid. Yeah. You know, I'm like, just leave me alone for a minute and him same way. And we'll come, we'll circle back after, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, because I, like I said, I'm a talker with him. Mm-hmm. I'm not just a talker in general. General, I, okay. I'm pretty much, I'm the quiet person. I'm laid back. I'm observant. Um, but I I fit into any mix, you okay. know, possibly, yeah. you know. I fit in any mix, but I'm just not, I'm not generally an outgoing extrovert, if you will. I'm gotcha. not that. I am, I am truly an introvert at heart. And this is kind of going to this question here kind of feeds in the, to some of the stuff I think we were just talking about. Do you feel like I keep secrets from you? Why or why not? I feel like he used to. Okay. Like years ago, I did used to feel like that, but like now, I don't feel that way um, okay. at all. Okay. I don't feel that way at all. Because uh, I feel like we talk We talk a lot. We talk. We spend a lot of time together. So mm-hmm. we talk about a lot of stuff. Right. You know, from Otis, Otis calls me throughout the day, throughout his work day. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. whether it's to vent about whatever's going on at work or just check in on me. Mm-hmm. And I may may or may not be able to talk because I'm like, baby, I'm busy. I tell him, I send him the voicemail like, hey, babe, I'm I'm in a meeting. I can't yeah, talk. You know, he's right. like, all right, I was just checking on you. But um, but no, like by the end of the day, when we come together, we haven't. You know, I try to wait on him to so we have dinner together so we uh-huh. can talk and and just decompress okay. from the day. All he right. lets me know things. I I share with him. We watch the TV and then we end up falling asleep. So yeah, and, and you know. during those times where when I wasn't so forthcoming, it, it was probably those sensitive situations where it involved maybe my sister or family. Okay. So it's, it's kind of difficult to. Yeah. 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 Um, do you guys, when you go out on your dates, is there a no phone rule at a certain time or how does that work? No, not really. Not really. No. Be, be, because um, if, if, if we're going somewhere, we are in tune to what's happening where we're at. Right. Okay. Uh, she, Kim is a Kim is very big on pictures, so okay. she's gonna take pictures before we go, where we get there, what we eat, what we drink, <laughs> all of those things. She's she's capturing the moment. Right. And and you know. But then after I capture, I'm done. I'm right. I put she's my phone. Well, well, that's what capture. that's what I was right. trying to get at. Like, uh, is it because I we try to? It doesn't always work. But uh, Mm because we both want to capture the moment as well. But my wife has always made mention to me, like, I don't want to get caught up in that because then I'm missing a moment. Like, I like, of course, when you go on vacation, taking the pictures Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. She's like, I want to be present in the moment. I can't do that if I'm snapping or, you know what I'm saying? And that's actually my lane that I'm going into now, videography and photography. But we've Mm -hmm. made an agreement. Let me know ahead of time. So I won't be thinking it's a date and you're out capturing content. So my, mm-hmm. so that's what my question is to you two. Like, do you, cause with us, I say, okay, when we first say we going out to dinner, we take our pictures, but we don't pick up our phones until after the food has been served. So at that point you can, but we, we need to talk. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause yeah. we'll put our phones down. Okay. Phones that's what down. I was getting at. Yeah. Right. The phones are down. Like, you know, if I just want to get like last night, we, uh, we were thinking about going to listen to some live music, but he was like, you know what? We really ain't got it to if you don't want to do it. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I'm good. So we just went to a sports bar and I took a picture of our drinks. I didn't post it on social media, but I just took a picture of our drinks mm-hmm. because I posted it in one of my girl chats. Okay. So I posted a picture of the drinks. I didn't post any, I didn't even take pictures of food. And normally okay. I'm a food taker yeah and i just didn't i just didn't you know there are there are those moments where i just don't mm-hmm. but when i do it's take a picture of the drinks boom 
after they're served, like you said, take a picture of the food, boom, after it's served, phone is down. It's away because we try to be in the Present. conversation yeah. of each other. Right. You right. know, we're not, yeah. oh, you know, got my phone, everything. No, it's phone is down. I, by this time I got my phone, it's, it's in my purse, it's away. Okay. And we're having conversations. And now you told her. Last night it was last and night now, was and, conversation of with each other and we was watching the basketball game right because we now you're basketball. intentional right you're intentional yes. with one another right. yeah yes. and i think i think that's absolutely important um who who initiates sex <laughs> how do you so, so kim you never initiate i never had to okay all right i've how never you, had to oh this how do you let your wife know you're ready it's go time it's a problem for him that I don't initiate. Yeah, that, that's, that's a problem. That, we do have those conversations. That's, that's one of our issues. Yeah, that's one. We of have our those issues. conversations, and and we and we talk about it, and we talk about it, and um, it's just it's it's just something that's not comfortable for her. And and I've I've learned to understand that it's not okay. comfortable for her. Okay. So I I have to be the initiator. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't want him because that's what he thinks. You know, when you, when, as a man, feels, as a man, yeah. men think, oh, because she's not initiating that she doesn't want it. No, it's not that. It's just that I've never had to. So I don't even know how to. I don't know how to initiate. So I just let him tell me when you, when you're ready. Because <laughs> you need it more than I do. <laughs> I don't need it that much. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, we we want to feel desired too. Exactly, exactly. We want to feel desired it, too. And you get that in the act of you find no, no, you no, 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 no. I ain't letting you get away be, with this we one. No, be made, we want to we want to feel like we're desirable. Yeah, exactly. And here's we here's what I would here's what I would tell my wife, like, because we had the same conversation. Mm -hmm. But she was kind of like you, Kim, not real, you know, she, you know, like I'm reserved said, in that respect. Right. But I would say um, 90, 95 percent of the time I'll do it. But I do want to know that I'm desired as well. She's gotten a lot better at doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I know trying. when she wants to try. I made attempts. And I know when she wants to because she'll come around rubbing on me a little bit more, complimenting me a little bit more. <laughs> Then guess what? I know it's go time. You know what I'm saying? She's <laughs> paying me a little bit more compliments, rubbing on the back of my yeah. neck. You know, so I know it's go time. And like I said, and Are and that's a happy a medium for me. Too. Like I said, I'll do yeah. 90, 95 percent of the initiation, but every now and then I want to know that I'm desired too. So right, that's right, you know, exactly. hey, help me out. That's understandable. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. That's fair. Yeah. So yeah, um, every everybody's love language is different. Everybody's and oh, different. to that point. I want you guys to read that book. Like, seriously, I'm oh, going to send you the test yeah, too. The five love language. Yeah, I'm going to send you the okay. test too so you will know what each other's love language are. I'll give you this piece of advice. Generally, we speak to our partners in our love language. But mm -hmm. if it's yes. not your love language, you're not going to understand it. Like, my love language is... I'm going to process it. Yeah, my love language is gifts. When me and my wife first got together, that's what I was doing for her. That wasn't her love mm -hmm. language. She wasn't, mm -hmm. she wasn't big on the gifts. Her love language is um, words of affirmation and acts of service. So yep. that's what Doing I would things. do. Like, you know, she Instead loved of purchases. It. Yeah. Taking out the trash and doing stuff around the house. Y'all oh were that. She loved that stuff. That's what yeah. she would like. Words of affirmation, letting her know she's beautiful. And also, like, you have a primary love language and then a secondary. So those were her two. And then touching her, you know what I'm saying? Letting her know she's beautiful. I wasn't speaking to her in that love language initially because I was I was giving to her what I wanted in return. Mine was gifts. You know, I like mm -hmm. gifts. You know, and, and initially when we started dating, that's what he used to do. He used to buy me expensive gifts. And I used to be like, I mean, it was, it was welcomed, but it was also like, it wasn't wow. speaking to you. Right. It was yeah. wild because I didn't ask for certain things, mm -hmm. but he would do those things and see through the year, like it's certain things like Valentine's day. We don't celebrate Valentine's day. You know what okay. I'm saying? I was like, I was never big on that. But, you know, in the beginning, he would send me flowers and all this to the job. You know, everybody, you girl, you got some flowers. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they're going to die because I don't take care of that kind of stuff. You 
know what I'm saying? And, but I was, my thing was the little note, like I mentioned earlier, it was the little notes around the house. Um, the it sounds like, sound like, it sound like you and my wife's love language might be the exact same. Yeah. Right. You know, it yeah. was all, for me, I always say it's the little thing, yeah. you know, like you said, taking out of the garbage or just buy me, I'm not, you know, a big soda drinker or anything, but my favorite soda is, and mm-hmm. he will come home like, baby, I got you a little snack. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. You ain't got to be coming home with Christian Dior right. and Gucci this <laughs> and Louis that. You ain't got to be doing none of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, he. I remember, like I said, in the 90s, he bought me a, I have a coach briefcase to this very day that still looks immaculate. Okay. That he bought me in the 90s. Okay. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, I didn't, it's, you know, the big, it was like money being spent like that back in the day. And I'm like, you ain't got to do that with me. We right. good. Right. You know, we good. Just treat me nice. Rub my feet. <laughs> Cause I'm big on we, that. We back on rub the feet again. Feet. <laughs> yes. Rub my feet. And just, just he, and he's, he is like you said with your wife, um, always telling her how beautiful she is. He does that all the time. Telling mm-hmm. me how much he loves me. Tell me how beautiful I am. I feel embarrassed by that sometimes because I was not, I've always had a complex about myself. One, being the dark skinned girl. You know what I'm saying? Being a dark skinned girl, having a big forehead. I had a complex about myself. Uh And you know, I've always said that to you about that. Mm -hmm. There, he has friends that have, made it to the league we've been in those settings where there's famous people okay athletes okay and i would always feel uncomfortable in the early stages of our relationship i felt so uncomfortable because i would look around the room and i would see these light-skinned long-haired pretty girls and i was were they black like, were they black kim Light skin, long hair, pretty girls. Okay, there you go. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You don't have to say no more. Right, but they light skin, long hair, pretty girls. Right. With the pretty hair. And I'm like, I'm ready to go. I feel Mm -hmm. so uncomfortable in this setting. And he, baby, you are beautiful. You look way better than these girls. I never felt that way. You know what I'm saying? I did not. That that was me having just my own issue. That was a complex problem. We weren't there for them. But I'm just saying, yeah, just, you know, in those settings that we have been, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine how that might, especially like for me, my wife used to like, she would always tell me, oh, you, ha- you know, tell me how good I look. That wasn't my love language. But she was telling me, she was saying that to me because that was really what she needed to hear. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It wasn't, I didn't understand it because for me, I, I, I felt like because of the life that I led. I got compliments from women all the time. So it wasn't real big, Mm -hmm. you know, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it now, you know, but it wasn't real big. She's saying that to me and I didn't get it. It wasn't speaking to me, but now I understand why she was doing that because that was, that was her love language. So now I I start speaking to her in her love language. So it just makes sense. But yeah, I, I totally understand. Totally get it. Um, but I definitely want you guys to read that book and I'm going to send you the test. It kind of tells you what your love language is. It's real quick. It's real easy. Okay. I'll, send, I'll send it. I got Kim. Okay. Number. I'll send it to you. So we've, um, I know cool. we went a long time. I appreciate it. Um, we went way over. Yeah, we went way time. over. Like, we two hours and almost two Yeah, we two hours here. in. Um, yes. Yeah. So I do want to say again, thank you so much for guys for coming on, being transparent. This is one of the most anticipated and, um, uh, interviews i've had i definitely was waiting on this i couldn't wait to i told Kim, <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to interview y'all no no seriously and i've i've actually enjoyed it i knew once we got to talking i was going to enjoy it and having a conversation oh, and i definitely you, hope man. my audience has got gotten some out of this as well mm-hmm. what i need you guys to do for me also is don't forget to subscribe and like the channel you know that okay. also helps the channel grow before we end it i do want to ask this one last question was there anything about what we've done and talked about today that you've learned about one another that you didn't know before? No. No. Okay. Okay. 
Because right. we done covered all bases. We done covered all bases. We done covered some bases and we probably ain't even talking about some bases that we done covered. You know what I'm right. saying? Don't worry. I'm going to have right. y'all back on in a later show but because we're going to have a reunion with everybody. So yeah, I'm going to have y'all back on. But this, I knew this was going to be a this was gonna be a good one. It was going to go over. So I appreciate y'all being transparent. Yes, once again, thank you so much. To um, and, and, and Anything we can do to uh, help Black love, anything we there can you do. go. That part, brother. Yeah. Yes, yes. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> y'all, y'all been hilarious, funny, and I, I love the serious moments. Y'all know when it was time to put the laughter to the side and talk about the serious stuff. So it's been very informative. I appreciate it once again. Right. Uh Otis and Kim Williams, right? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Otis and Kim mm -hmm. Williams, uh, thank you again for coming on um, Black Marriage Chronicles. It's funny now. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to the both of you. Kim, happy Mother's Day to you again. Happy thank Mother's you, Day Al. to all my uh, 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 fans of the show who are uh, also on this channel and will see this uh, content. Um, with that, I'm going to leave you guys a piece. Oh, would anybody like to pray us out? We got a praying person over there? Otis, you want to pray or you want me to do it? You can. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, mm -hmm. Father God, we just want to thank you right now for the Williams, Otis, and Kim. We ask that you touch their family, Father God. We thank you for this platform. We ask that uh, the uh, information that is uh, gleaned here, um, the information that has been shared here, reaches the many couples that may need it uh, that is, or that are looking to get married, Father God. You say where two or three are gathered, you are in the, in the, in the midst. We just thank you right now, Father God. We ask you to continue to bless this 28-year marriage that you give them uh, however many years left they have on this earth together, Lord, that it may be joyful and um, bountiful, that you bless their family, Father God, that everything they touch turns to gold, Father God. And we just ask that you continue to be in the midst and continue to bless this platform. Also, we I just ask for blessings for myself and my family as well, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for you are the creator. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. We appreciate you, Father God. And you say, um, you say when praises go up, blessings come down. We just thank you right now in the mighty name of Christ. All right. Amen. 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 All right, you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Y'all right. enjoy it and y'all have a good one. Thank you again. All right. All right thanks, Al. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye. All right. So that was another episode of Black Merits Chronicle. That was Otis and Kimberly Williams. Uh, I know that the interview went over a little long and it always kind of do when I have a guest that I know it was, they gave a lot of information. You're talking about 28 years of marriage. So they had a lot to offer. I didn't want to leave anything on the table, uh, but we would definitely have them back. So if there's anything that you would uh, like to see or know more, please don't forget to leave your comments below. Uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for any of my uh, new viewers. We appreciate you. With that, I'm going to leave you in peace.